Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick, and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day January Reset. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Happy New Year, everyone. You know the saying, New Year, New You. Well, it's true. For many January is about resolutions and resets, and we have you covered. From the latest kicks making their mark all over social media, to must-have elevated everyday items that will add ease to your routine, whether your new goals are in the kitchen or the gym. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Let's start with beauty in the new year. So this bestseller from Kiehl's can help give your under eye a new lease in 2022. This is their creamy avocado eye treatment and all I can say is thank you. It may be small in size, but it sure packs a big hydrating punch. It is just so creamy and so rich and it's really perfect for this time of year when we're all combating drier skin and what I love about it is it has ingredients like avocado oil and beta carotene and even shea butter. So there's a lot to love with this little Kiehl's eye treatment. Next, it's winter, and we know the feeling of dry hands. So if giving your nails a little TLC is part of your list of beauty resolutions, this cuticle oil is for you. So it's called the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, and it's actually made with cold-pressed oils and vitamins that is designed to blend and help give intense hydration to your cuticles and your nails, whether they're brittle or cracking or just super dry. But one of my favorite things about this cuticle oil is that you can also use it on your skin. And we're washing our hands all the time these days, so that's really helpful. Now, I am really excited about this next one, which I've personally tried. I mean, talk about an easy skin upgrade for the new year. This is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF 50, and this is a multitasking cult favorite wonder. And it's essentially a tinted moisturizer, or I guess you could call it even a moisturizing foundation. And I've always really been excited about the idea of a tinted moisturizer, but I've never really been able to find one that had the right amount of coverage. So when I tried this little CC Plus cream, I cannot tell you. It was like a eureka moment. It gave me almost instantaneous full coverage, but it felt really, really light. And it didn't look like I was wearing a ton of makeup. Also, it comes in 12 different shades. Okay, New Balance has once again taken the sneaker world by storm with one of the hottest, most talked about sneaker designs of the past two years. Sneaker fans, meet the New Balance 327 and it is seriously stylish. It actually launched on the runways in Paris. And what people are loving so much about this sneaker is its retro style. It's got a total 70s vibe. But what's so cool about it is it's made with high-tech materials. So you're getting that retro vibe and modern day comfort. It's angular, it's got great suede details. I love the sole. It's pretty much a platform and who doesn't like a little lift? And I think one of my favorite things about the 327 is all the great colors. Today we've got this bold orange with the forest green logo, this lavender with the metallic silver, and these purple, which really to me look like very Perry, which is the Pantone color of the year for 2022. Now, this next one is something that I hadn't seen before. It's an exciting new take on the puffer, and you're gonna wanna add this to your winter uniform this year. It's from Old Navy, and it's called the Packable Half Zip 
water-resistant quilted jacket. First of all, it can do a really cool party trick, which I'll show you in a minute. This material is so warm, it's so light, it's not bulky, and I am so jazzed about the silhouette. It's oversized, which we're seeing so much of now. It's got the great drop shoulder and it's long. It really hits at a flattering place on the hip. Plus, it's got the high-low hem longer in the back. So this gives you a little bit more coverage. It looks great with leggings and it's really versatile. You can easily layer this. Now, let me show you the party trick that I mentioned. See this little pocket here? This entire jacket can fold down and fit into this little pocket. So it's packable. So you can throw it in your bag and go. It's great for travel. It'll fit in your suitcase. This is a really cool jacket. Now, another useful cold weather piece to invest in this new year, the puffer vest. Layer it, live in it, or just love it. You'll want to wear this versatile down vest from Land's End every chance you get. Talk about an affordable upgrade. I cannot get over the price on this one. And this little vest has style and substance. Let's talk about these bold colors. They are so on trend. I don't know which one I like best. Plus, these are actually really flattering and they have a couple of cool features. First of all, they're tailored. But secondly, they have this shape enhancing stitching. So see this stitching here? They kind of look like rectangles. That's called baffling. So if you notice on the front, it is a wider baffling. On the side, the stitching and the baffling is more narrow. So it gives this slimming optical illusion. So we talked about the style, now let's talk about the substance. These babies are made with genuine 600 fill power down. So that means weightless warmth. Yep, three cheers for these little puffer vests. They really do elevate the everyday. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my all time favorite solutions to looking cool while staying comfy, the sweat set. So let me tell you what I love about the set. So each of these are fantastic in their own right. We've got a crew neck top with a sort of oversized silhouette. It's cropped, it's flattering. We've got the new high-waisted jogger, but when you put these two together, you get an outfit. Suddenly, you've got instant elevation. It looks so stylish. It even almost looks like a jumpsuit. And what I love so much about this is we're still super comfy. We're still wearing sweats, but it kind of doesn't look like it. And these crew necks and joggers are so incredibly soft. They're made out of a French terry and Gap has even used this great washing technique that makes these feel like they're vintage or well-loved. So when you put them on for the first time, they kind of feel like you're already wearing your favorite pair of sweats. So I'm really loving all the fun fashion forward colors and I can't wait to get in my sweat set <laughs> and enjoy 2022. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment, the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF, the New Balance 327 Sneakers, the Old Navy Packable Half Sip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket, the Lands In Puffer Vest, and the Gap Sweat Set. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCoe and Logan is talking to trend expert Brittany Levine about her favorite items to stock up on for the new year. And later, Jen Fallick tackles more must-haves, whether your resolutions involve the kitchen or the gym. Don't go away.
I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. And today's show is all about kicking off the new year with a reset. Style and trend expert Brittany Levine is here to help us start 2022 right. Brittany, it's so good to see you. Did you have a good holiday? Yes, it's so good to see you too, Mako. It was wonderful, well-rested, and now I'm ready to dive into January and everything that that means, right? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Now, before we get into January reset, let's talk about the fact that you have this adorable baby boy. Did you enjoy the holidays? Did you do anything special? Yes, well, we were able to go down and get a little warm weather with him, and it was just great to spend the time with family and just have everyone around being healthy and safe, so that was really cool. Did you have a good holiday, too? I did. It was really nice to be with family, just like you. So because this is all about the January reset, Brittany, I'm just curious to know, do you have any specific traditions that you had at the top of the year? I do like to do some things in terms of resetting, you know, my meal prep. I like to start really doing clean eating and then also trying to get as organized as possible because I feel like when you are organized and things are all settled around you, you work harder, you do better. So that for me, it's like little things that help me get more done along the way. So let's start with the first item. This was great. Tell me all about them. Well, you know how when you are taking your vitamins and your supplements, they're in these really ugly packages and they hurt your hands. But what Mumi has done, this company, is created these color-coded packages here that are by day. So you have every day of the week in a specific color, you put your vitamins and supplements in there and you throw them in your bag and they're airtight, they're really perfect to keep everything nice and clean. And I just love these because it keeps them all together. It keeps them organized. And that way, you know exactly what you're supposed to be taking on each day. And this is all from Moomi Design. They have some great pill pouches in larger sizes and smaller ones too. Okay, let's move on to the next item. One of the things I love to do during the course of the year is get my nails done, but it's expensive to go to the salon. It's so time consuming and you've got this great solution. So tell me about the Manny Rescue Kit. Yes, okay, so this is from Gloss Lab. They created their proprietary kits here that really are aimed to just save every issue that you have with your nails. This is a Manny Rescue Kit. So if you have a chip, if you need a little bit extra polish, if you need to smooth something out, they have everything in that kit there for you that just comes in these cute little pouches. So again, something easy to just reset, throw in your bag and go all from Gloss Lab. How adorable is this? Like one of my goals for this year, Britt, is to travel. So I love how small these are. Okay, let's move on to the next item. This wash buffer is so cute, but how does it work? So we're talking about the sponge gel infused buffer yeah. right now. So this is amazing because you see that it comes in this gorgeous flower design, but this gives you a chance to exfoliate, cleanse, and moisturize your body in up to 14 washes. And we're talking about a body reset here because when you really exfoliate your skin, that's when you give your skin the chance to glow. So this is by Sun Gel, their body infused wash buffers. They're all available at Anthropology for $16. They're super easy to just hang on to your shower, cleanse your skin, and they come in all of these gorgeous scents. Mako. This is the Freesia Pear. Absolutely stunning. It's going to really create that spa-like experience in your bathroom. And I know not a lot of us are getting out to the spas right now. So if you want to do that for you, reset at home and give yourself that pampering experience. This is what you need. I love that. And it's like a two and one. So it's such a space saver. It's a time saver. I absolutely love that. Okay, so let's move on to electronics. Everyone can relate to this. You got wires all over the place. I love that this next item can keep you organized. Exactly, I like to keep everything organized. So in order to reset your life in terms of your electronics and all those different cords, this is a case from Ganamoto. You can get it on Amazon, $45.99, and they come in different sizes. All you do is just slip all of your wires in here, basically organize them by area. You can also put your chargers in there as well. So this is something that can have everything in one place. And then when you are going to look for something, because I'm always losing the cord for the specific item, you know where it is, right? It's in that specific place, it's in that compartment, and then you just zip it up, 
and you're good to go. How so perfect is that? This is going to be a lifesaver for you and your family if you get one of these. Speaking of lifesavers, all about January Reset, we're trying to save you money. And when it comes to groceries, I want to keep my groceries fresher and keep them nice and organized. And I am so obsessed with these meal prep containers. These colors are so cute. Aren't they amazing? So oh. these are the Ello Dura Glass containers. They come by color coding and they're glass. So when your food is stored in glass, it really preserves the food longer. It keeps everything airtight. It's also BPA free. So you just put your food in there for the week, prep it, you're ready to go. Load these in your refrigerator. If you want to take these on the go with you too, you have this silicone coating that surrounds the glass to keep everything safe. Stack them up and you've got your meal prepped for the week. I mean, it's not, it's easier than that, right? That is so clever. If you're starting to go back into the office and you need uh, organizers, meal prep containers, these are so classy. Well, Brent, I feel like I'm ready for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for joining us on our January Reset. I hope you have a great, sparkling 2022. You as well. Thanks so much, Mika. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The pill pouches, the Gloss Lab Manny Rescue, the Spawn Gel Box Flower Body Wash and Fuse Buffers, the electronics case, and the glass food storage meal prep containers. Up next, Jen Fowler continues with the January reset. Whether your reset goals are in the kitchen or in the gym, don't go away. All day contributor Jen Fallick. Welcome back to Shop All Day, where we're talking all about that January reset. We have must have products, whether your new year goals are drinking more water, spending more time in the kitchen, or making more me time. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Upping your daily water intake can be key to reaching your health and fitness goals, which is why so many of us are making the resolution to drink more water in 2022. And this water bottle could help make all the difference. Check this out. 
So this is a water bottle that has a time marker, but unlike many similar products, this water bottle is actually really sleek looking. You can bring this with you out and about all day long. You could bring it to a work meeting. It fits in the cup holder of your car. It's just like a fashionable, great accessory item that happens to also help you achieve your hydration goals. All you gotta do is stick to the markers, refill at lunchtime, and by the end of the day, you will have downed half a gallon of H2O no problem. There's different colors. I love the metallic tops too. Easy to clean. These are genius. Another great way to stay on point with your health, wellness, and fitness goals is to get into the smoothie lifestyle. I am a huge fan of smoothies because for me, they're so delicious. They're really filling. And with this product, they are so easy to make. This is the blend jet. And all you got to do with this charge it up, it's USB rechargeable. So every full charge is gonna give you 15 smoothies that you can blend up anywhere, anytime, on demand. You throw this in your bag and you literally put in whatever you want to mix in your smoothie. I love to put in some berries, a little milk, maybe a little protein powder if you're in the mood. And you don't even need a cup because you can drink right from the top of the jar. It's small, but this is a mighty. There's a patented TurboJet technology in here that blends some of the toughest foods in 20 seconds flat, according to the brand. Comes in a ton of fun colors too. I love the little turquoise here, the blue. This is such a great gift for a fitness fanatic. Do you have anyone that you wanna gift to this month? But for yourself, this is a must. Now, if getting to the gym is part of your 2022 plan, we have an elevated essential that you need to own. Check out this duffel exercise bag. It can really feel overwhelming to pack up for the gym when you have a full day ahead of you. I love that this has compartments for everything, so it's so much easier to pack efficiently. You've got the spot for your water bottle, there's a spot for your sneakers. You know, there actually is a separate shoe compartment. You can also attach your yoga mat up here. And I love that there's a waterproof compartment in here. So after your workout, you can store your workout where in there until you've got a chance to throw it in the laundry. We cannot ignore the fact that this bag is cute. I love the quilting. I love the gold zipper detail. It's got a crossbody strap so you can tote it around hands-free. All the options. Now that we have your fitness hacks handled, let's talk about meal prep. If that was one of your resolutions, we're gonna start with this Herb Saver Pod. I am madly in love with this product. I own three and they are always in my fridge at all times. This preserves your herbs and saves valuable space in your fridge. All you do is you rinse and dry your favorite fresh herbs, be basil, mint, oregano, dill, and you place them right inside the pod. Then there's this little spigot on the back. You just add water to the bottom. And these herbs will be good to go for up to three weeks. In addition to herbs, I put asparagus and scallions in these. And you save so much money too because there's less waste. Now that you have a fridge stocked with delicious fresh herbs, enter the herb shears. Check these out. I absolutely love these. The fact that I can literally chop fresh herbs right into a salad or right on top of chicken is huge. You can just snip and savor the most delicious meals. Plus, these are so easy to clean. They come with a little comb that you can basically brush through to get any little bits and pieces out, give it a quick rinse under the faucet, and then throw them right in the dishwasher. It couldn't be easier. Now, planning ahead is the key to changing your life with meal prep, but you need to be ready to store all the staples that you make. And bulky containers can take up way more space than we have to spare, right? Enter these collapsible containers, ready? These are stackable and collapsible silicone containers. They're great to store all kinds of food. You can put your leftovers in here, you can put your chopped up prep veggies. These have a snap on lid. Snap it on, you know when it's nice and secure. And when not in use, you can collapse them down to one third of their original size, right? So this is what they collapse down, so easy to store. Besides saving space at home, if you're taking a snack to go, once you're done, flatten them out and You've got more room for everything else that you need to bring around with you every day. This next product is another one that we swear by in my house. These reusable lidded bowls have a sturdy lid that has a really secure wrap. So it's easy for all ages from my six-year-old all the way up to open and then when they're done to reseal. All you gotta do, put the top right on, 
and easy to clip it right around. It's leak proof and it's sleek looking. So this is sophisticated enough for me to take with me if I'm going to like a work meeting. This looks like a beautiful high-end bowl, but totally portable. Now, to round out the resolution trifecta, the next thing everyone's thinking about right now is getting a better night of sleep. So first up is a white noise machine. I love this white noise machine because besides drowning out environmental noise, white noise can become part of that bedtime ritual that really helps to cue your brain and your body that it's time to wind down. This machine right here, so little, right? It has 20 sounds to choose from, including ocean, rain, bonfire noises, if traditional white noise isn't your thing. And it has a little timer right here, so if you want it to auto shut off after an hour, you can. Or if you prefer that white noise to last all night long, it'll work that way too. Another thing that's important to note about this, again, is the portability. I find that when I'm on a work trip or if I'm away with my family, having those little reminders of my nighttime routine on a daily basis really helps me to fall asleep. And now that we've set the ambiance with the white noise, the sleep eye mask is the last thing you need to complete the moment. And this one is a gem. Light is super disruptive when you're trying to sleep, both falling asleep and staying asleep. And while you cannot always control the environment around you, with this sleep mask, you can control how it affects your rest. I love the design. Some sleep masks can feel claustrophobic. They really press down on your eyelids but not this one. With this, you've got the little openings here so your eyes can breathe and blink. It's memory foam as well, so it means you're gonna get a custom comfy fit every time and beautiful colors too. It just feels great, it works wonders, it's a no-brainer. Now let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the water bottle with time marker, the blend jet, the Exercise Duffel Bag, the Herb Saver Pod, the Herb Shears, the Collapsible Containers, the Reusable Lid and Bowl, the White Noise Machine, and the Sleep Eye Mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on all your better basics and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh exactly. darn. Well, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good. And I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Today, Chef Jet Tila is going to bring the heat and teach me a few tricks for an easy at home barbecue. We'll be making pulled pork sandwiches with an Asian apple slaw, plus a side of hearty cornbread. I am feeling ready to tackle this one. So let's get started. I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you want to learn to teach me foundational stuff because I don't know anything. Have you heard? I don't buy that, Savannah. Oh. I've been watching you cook and come. you've come a long way. So what do we do? What's our All plan? Right. Our plan for today is season the pork, sear the meat before braising, cut the vegetables and mix the dressing for the slaw, make and bake the cornbread, shred the pork, assemble the sandwiches, plate and serve. Our barbecue brothers are gonna get mad at us yes. for calling this barbecue. We are um, creating a version of barbecue in the house by braising. Barbecue technically is smoking something for a very long time until okay. it breaks down. Okay, no okay. smoking. Braising is, like, what does that mean, really? Very simply stated, we're gonna take a tough cut of meat mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to cook it uh, slowly with a little bit of liquid so all of the toughness breaks down. Oh, we're gonna cook the crap out of we're it. We're gonna cook the crap out of it okay. and make it delicious. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mince an onion. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, I don't mince. I have I've minced before. Have you diced? Oh, yes. It just means smaller dice. Okay. That's all it means. This is one thing I learned. Show me. When you have a round thing, do you, you gotta oh, make a oh, flat side. Oh, let me show you another way. So can you cut down? Yeah. The all the, all the way through. Okay, yes. Just okay. Leave, it, leave it connected. I gotcha. Like this. Okay. You're totally killing it. 
I'm... My, what a sharp knife this is. <laughs> Isn't that sharp, though? For yeah, real. it does make it easier, assuming you don't cut yourself. Now, we're going to come inwards now. You see, we're going to follow the lines. Yeah, okay. You lead with the tip down, and then and then rock. You know that rocking oh, motion? Oh, yeah, see? okay. Oh, see how that yeah. feels? Yeah, uh -huh, I do. You're a great cook. It's just all about believing <laughs> you're a great cook. You're, you're killing it. You are a sweet talker. Nope, it's the truth. Look what you're doing. You're going to make me cry, or maybe <laughs> it's just the onion. Yeah, okay. it's... Definitely the onion, okay. definitely the onion. Are these mincy enough? Those are beautifully mincy. And we're gonna teach you to do a dry rub. So dry rub is basically a, a seasoning mix that yep. goes on a uh, piece of beef for barbecue. We're gonna apply it to the braise. Okay. Uh, so. Brown sugar. Brown sugar, how about? Oh, you're one of those put a piece of bread in <laughs> brown sugar. How much? Uh, we're gonna go three, two, one. So three tablespoons, okay. so salt, two. Okay. And again, that you can. That's a lot of salt. And this is coarse salt, I uh, see. I mean, I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it is for four pounds of pork butt. I like paprika. Mm -hmm. That was coriander. Okay. That was ground coriander. This, this is, is like garlic. garlic powder, yeah. yeah. The one pepper. Yeah. One pepper, yeah. You can either whisk it or stir it or whatever you want. You Look can, at that. You just made a driver, so you gotta just taste everything. Even the rice. Go easy, you can go easy if you want. Oh, but it's delicious. What do you think? I Isn't like that it. nice, sweet, a little bit of um, savoriness. Nice. Then we're gonna use you <laughs> pork butt. I like to say pork behind. <laughs> you know, my mother watches this show. That's right, that's right. There, you, okay. grab it, you grab it, open it. We'll talk about the actual muscle. Pork yeah, booty. Like pork booty. All right, pork so. Pork rear end. There are so many words for that part of Isn't the anatomy. Isn't there? Um, Pork, Perriere. pork tushy. The irony is it doesn't even come from that part of the pork. It doesn't? No. Well, why do we call it pork tushy? Uh, so if you look at the shoulder here, right, of, of the four, the yeah. four end, the four inch shoulder. Two hoofs. Two here. hoofs right here. So this is, um, uh, there's two shoulders, there's two pork shoulders, mm -hmm. right? The lower part is called the picnic, which is more the upper arm, okay. right? And this is actually up here. It's the most versatile, in my opinion, uh, cut of the pork because it's got the perfect fat ratio. Mm -hmm. It's got perfect connective tissue. It's great for this. Okay. And what we're gonna do is cut it into six equal pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna take my butt right here. <laughs> <laughs> take that butt. Oh wait, we haven't had a sip. Uh, we always drink on starting from scratch. Cheers. Cheers to cheers you. Cheers to you. We're drinking a... Um, French 75. This is my wife's play on it. Um, nice. It's a hibiscus flower. So gin, honey, mm. hibiscus, and champagne. That Cheers is to you. delicious. Cheers. And to Mrs. Tila. To, uh, to all family. Yes. Yeah, those will get you in trouble. Woo! Super easy to drink. All right, we're liquored up. Let's get the knives and the yeah, pork out. So I'm really... just going to cut six equal pieces. Yeah, you can do it that way. You can do it this way. Well, what would three. you do? I would, I, so in my mind, I'm always thinking a, a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. That's like my overarching guidelines. So it's a tile mm -hmm. right now, right? Okay. And the tile becomes a slice, which is all two long pieces, and then the slice becomes a dice. And look at you. You got six pieces right there. Even knife cuts are critical for even cooking. The tile becomes a slice, yep. which then becomes and a then the dice. And then the slice becomes a dice. And do it thrice. <laughs> there One, you go. One, two, three. See, look at that. Okay. And that way, um, you kind of, uh, it's a regiment mm -hmm. to, to tell yourself how to cut things. That's gorgeous. Is this though. good? Yeah, that's These perfect. guys aren't too big? Okay. Nope, not at all. I'm following your lines, but okay, this yeah. is fun. So now the spice robe. I like to kind of season in this tray. Show me your technique. I, I'll do one. So I'm like, I'm not being shy. Like, mm -hmm. I can, you can use all, all this. There's sides. one way. Here's another way to do it. Let's it, go to town. Good. Can I ask a dumb question? There's no such thing, oh, Savannah. Sorry, another We're not dumb gonna... question. Dumb question alert. There dumb question <laughs> alert. Well, like, could you ever, it's so tasty. Could I put it on a vegetable? A thousand percent. Okay. Is now, would fine? you like sprinkle the rest? You wouldn't want to. Go, wanna... go, go. Yeah, I like go. to just sprinkle. Get See? in there. Um, okay. It's about feeling your way through it. And mm -hmm. if you didn't taste that rub, yeah. you wouldn't, you'd be a little nervous to apply some. Right. Much. Okay. Like we can wash I'm, hands. Since we touched raw pork, yeah. I, I will clear and wash hands. Raw How's pork, that rub. We're okay. doing great. And I'm going to crank up uh, your Dutch oven mm -hmm. and get that going. Let's talk about braising really quick. First thing we're going to do. <laughs> All right, don't leave me hanging, girl. Here. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry. Together. I just want to celebrate every step. Perfect. Okay. Um, first step is always going to be browning your protein. Okay. Right? Uh, Hot pan. This is not there. a cast iron. This is a oh, no. Dutch Say oven. It. Uh, it is. So I put those two together. It is a cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, okay. How's Great. That Lovely. Yeah. Um, enough oil. You can measure if you want, but I'm. I, well, you, for me today, we're going to cook by feel. Okay. I like that. Now, it's hot. Do it's, I wait for the oil to get hot and start bubbling or anything? You know, you can always wait for a little bit of white smoke. Yeah. You can actually do a test. So why don't you take a piece and kind of touch it. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the ch, we're in good shape. It's not a very wide tongue. Right? Okay. Here, Lou. You hear the ch. 
I hear it. I totally now, how hear many, it. Like, am I, is this a don't crowd the pan situation? This is cold. This is hot. It's always don't crowd a pan situation when you're browning something. Let's okay. talk about some basics while we're waiting for the brown. Number one, uh, don't we don't mess with it. Another thing we're building, a concept of fond. Have mm -hmm. any of your chefs talked fond. about F-O-N-D, fond? No, fun, fun. but not fun. <laughs> fond. Fond is fun. Fond. It's a fabulous. What is it? Um, if you lift that piece up and we yeah. look into the pan, you see the bits that are sticking? Yes. Those are gonna become beautiful, crispy bits mm -hmm. that later we're gonna pull up and incorporate into the sauce. Okay. Think about fond as foundation of flavor. Girls just wanna have fun. That's exactly okay. right. Now, is this one of those deals That's where you gorgeous. sear on all sides? Is, is, you want and I'm gonna have to prop it coverage. up? Yep. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. That is now that's we're talking. exactly what we want. Let's get the next Let's contestants up. Absolutely. Can I put it right back on I here? I totally think you can. I think that's going to be somewhat controversial out in the world. Oh, okay. But remember, team, at 165 degrees, yeah. everything is, is And sanitized. just relax, everybody. It's yeah. Chef Chet Tila. I like that. knows what he's doing, See? okay? So don't get all worked trust up about us. it. Trust us. Trust. Don't trust me. Don't but trust, trust Savannah. Him. Okay, these look good. Let's start building flavor. So okay. how about a little bit of that onion okay. first? Now you can start scraping that okay. fond. Scraping up the bits is releasing of the fond. There you go. It sounds more, it sounds sexier, doesn't it? Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Okay. We're gonna make the braising liquid now. Okay. Uh, and now we're gonna do red wine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you could be any alcohol, but yeah. red wine is gonna go with this kind of darker, richer braise. Okay. So whenever just, you're doing alcohol, just a really good tip because this might be hot and it might flare. There's a small chance. So take a half step back. I like to just put the lip of the bottle here oh. and just pour away. I yeah. don't know what it. Uh, enough cup to is. kind of coat the bottom. Like, see how we're almost at the that bottom. Is that good? Now we coat the bottom. That's it. Good. Okay. See how easy that I is. I do. Okay. Yeah. And now you can scrape. Use that. Now you've deglazed. You're officially deglazing. Deglazing. Yeah. All the day long. Once you feel this pan smooth. Yes. You've done a great job releasing the font. You're done. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're gonna build liquid more. Okay. All right. And uh, this is fun. Is that fun? Yeah. Cola is excellent for braising. I. We'll stand on that. So is that next? Cola? Yeah, that's next. Yeah. Crack that can okay. and give us about a half cup or a cup. The carbonation, the caramel, the sugar, the phosphates. I mean, that's so interesting. Isn't that fun? Think that's more? enough? Beautiful, right there. How fun. Right? Um, and now... Did you I, just make that up? No, no. I use cola to braise carnitas, to braise uh, short ribs. Wow. Yeah, I mean, if you think about the, the flavor of, of, of the cola. Yeah. Now, all right. Now we're gonna add the, the pork back in and we're gonna add okay. more liquid. Okay. But we need a visual cue. We need to know okay. how much. So now am I gonna put all of these guys now, in? Now all here? of it goes in now. It does. Because okay. we're not worrying about crowding the pan. Mm -hmm. See the rate of boil? Yes. I want to simmer. There's hardly One any more. room for this big old that's, piece of butt. That's perfect. <laughs> okay. Our fundamentals of braising liquid can never be higher than halfway up the protein. Okay. Okay, so that knowing that. We need barbecue sauce. Am I All tasting right. the barbecue? I think. Remember, Jeff Tila says taste every taste layer. Taste everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Taste everything. So knowing, I'll get rid of mm, it. I like that. And am I going to stir it around so it's yeah, everywhere? Yeah, perfect, right there. You think we're halfway up the biggest pieces of protein yet? I don't know. I don't want to get the wrong answer, but I'm going to say. I'm gonna say yes. I say we're almost there. Okay. Because okay, now we're gonna account for three hours of braising okay. and some reduction. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a touch of chicken stock. Okay. A touch of chicken. So chicken I don't need too much. No. The chicken stock just sort of to get us to the level we want. That's exactly right, okay. Tina. That's exactly right. right. We're done. Okay, but don't I need to stir it up? Or just anything? a little bit, because you know what's gonna happen at 325 degrees, mm -hmm. it's gonna simmer in, in the pot. So it's. This looks stir. amazing. I eat it right now. To I'm the oven it goes. Away. 325. I want to make sure that the uh, the brazier is in the middle of the oven. So set your rack oh. so when the when it's in, it's right in the middle. Okay. And then see you later, braze. Bye.
got smell three good. hours to kill. What should we do? Uh, I think we need to make the Asian apple slaw. Okay. Which would basically, in a cook's in a cook's mind, just how to make coleslaw. Okay. But we're gonna start with a, about a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. All right. What does slaw taste like to you? Flavor, yeah. Um, like the hot, little, sour, salty, sweet, or savory. Uh, Ooh, yeah, like acidity. Yes, yeah. Why don't right. we start with sweet? Okay. And again, uh, we're so gonna be using. a little using, honey. How much? I'm gonna go two tablespoons here. Do you know your your um, your, your conversions yet? How many teas into a table? Of course I don't. No big deal. We're just gonna learn one today. Okay. I think three teas to the table. Oh, you know what? I huh. never knew that and I've always wanted to know that. There you go. So, uh, we've got soy sauce and sesame oil. Okay, that's one, a tablespoon. One each. Okay. One each. And I'm using soy sauce here because it creates salt, creates um, a little bit of umami, the mm. savoriness. If you don't want a soy sauce, go salt. Okay. Now, sesame oil, same thing, one tablespoon. One cup of rice vinegar now. Oh, okay. We're gonna work that in slowly. I'm gonna get the lumps out. That's wow, dressing. That's nice. Should right. we taste it? But it's so important. Oh, I love that. Is that nice? Toasty, yummy. Oh Good. my gosh, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you wanted more sweet, you know where to go. If you want more salt, you know where to go. Yes. Again, intuitive cooking. Chop chop time. Uh, I'm going to start with the cabbage. Okay, this is the intimidating cabbage. We've had. We've had some issues with cabbage before. Talk to me. Oh, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Yeah, tame and the beast. If it's tame the beast, then it rolls around on us less. Okay, yeah. woo! If I were to think about everything as tile, slice, dice, yes. I would think this is the tile. Okay. And then what if this was the slice? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that. So but me, okay. I'm just saying like half the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This is the spine of the knife, mm -hmm. right? You're bunched up against the board. If you took a half step back, mm -hmm. you give yourself more room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And if you made sure that spine was flat, mm -hmm. think about perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. always gonna have straight cuts. Okay. Oh, you're just sort of using I'm a just visual using, guide. Yeah, that's it, it's, a, it's a, like see. a landmarker. Okay. Julianne Apple. Julianne Apple. We're looking for about that eighth to quarter of an inch pieces. Is gonna this it, that I'm doing these round slices? Yeah, okay. because uh, the, we're gonna end up with a matchstick. Oh, so we'll okay. take that round slice, which is And then is our, make little batches. That's oh, it. Oh, I see it. Okay. I lay them on top of each other. The stack height is totally up to your comfort level. Okay. And then what I do is lay them up, and then same thing. We're uh -huh. done with apple. Okay, good. And now we're going to go to carrot. I flatten round things, boom, like that. Mm -hmm. And then I lay them on their flat side. Mm -hmm. Now that, uh, that keeps us from getting cut. Okay. And, and a carrot's going to give you a lot of resistance. Really Tile great. slice dice. Tile slice that dice. That means first mark it out. Yep. Then slice it, then chop it up a little That's bit. That's it, because... Okay, now I see what you mean. So now we can toss it, right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Would have been good if we had a bigger bowl, though, right? <laughs> so I would do just a good pinch of salt. You mean then... salt and then turn, salt yeah, and turn. exactly. Oh, just a good a good thing of salt right now. Done. Okay. And then we'll turn. And then turn it. But that's not going to make it all too salty? Like no, nope. that's more. perfect right there. Yeah, because that's why we tasted the dressing first. Yes. So we know kind of how much salt we need. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome, Savannah. Okay, this really does look good. I think we can sesame now. Just um, like sprinkle, Yeah, just sprinkle. Zh, 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 and then do another toss. Okay, good? Yeah, looks okay. beautiful. Yes. So we're going to let it chill a little bit. Chill. Yes, chill Yes, chill. Chill. See okay. you later. Bye-bye. Bye, bro.
pulled pork's braising. Yep. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, the slaw is relaxing. And then we're going to get to cornbread. I like to break it into different um, components. So we're going to okay. do dry, wet cream butter. We okay? got the flour. Yeah, so why don't you throw cup of in a um, cup of cornmeal. Yeah. Here you do want to measure. Yes. Right? And That's one thing I do know from baking. Yeah. You kind of have to be on it. Okay. There you go. Four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you got it. And okay. I usually consider um, salt a dry. Uh, uh, yeah, I would. But here's a good tip. Like usually when you're creaming butter, uh, sugar's not a dry. Like your cookie recipe. Sugar right? goes with the liquids. There it is. Okay. One teaspoon kosher salt. Okay, you got these it. are dry. Whisk them. Let's whisk them together. Okay. Now you're going to do the wets now mm -hmm. in uh, that large measuring bowl. Okay, so. You're going to start with eggs. And one thing I learned is you don't do it on the edge. Yes. So that was one thing. Look at you, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Now I yeah. did learn on one show how to do the one hand crack. Should okay, I try say, it? do that. Do the save the last one, please, okay. for one hand. But it's a real messy situation. There you it's go. not really. Yeah. Like, second hand got in there late. Okay, so work in progress. So let's whisk up those eggs okay. until uh, mm -hmm. totally together, where you can't tell if it's white or if it's yolk. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. And then I'm gonna fly in your milk. Okay. There it is, one and two thirds cup. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in, whisk that together. Okay. And you basically separated your dries. Mm -hmm. You've got your wets. And I'm gonna bring in the mixer to cream butter. Have you creamed butter? I have not. Okay, this is important. This is a really good concept okay, to learn. Okay, so is this done enough? That's Good. lovely. Okay. We'll put it to the side. Oh, I love the mixer. Okay, creaming butter. Yes. Uh, oh, first, do we need to get acclimated with the mixer? I actually know this mixer. Okay, good. I have this mixer. Okay. We're gonna go to the paddle. paddle. It says 12 tablespoons of butter. That's one and a half sticks. Yep, so yeah. save us half a stick for, for, for greasing the dish. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I see this is room temp butter. Yeah, which is really important, team, mm -hmm. that you can't cream butter that's okay. not room temp. Then we need now a cup of sugar. sugar. Yep, okay. a cup of sugar. Low so, first. Low. What we're doing here is using the sugar, mm -hmm. because it's coarse, to whip air into the butter. Okay. That's all we're doing. This is gonna give you a really light, fluffy Fluffy, cornbread. okay. That's period, so now you go higher. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is color. Oh. It's a pale yellow. Uh, it's gonna start to become one fluffy, beautiful mass. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna get even more pale. Now, I can get obsessive about pushing stuff down Which, on the side, should thank, I? Thank you for mentioning it, because it's so important. So let's turn it off mm -hmm. every so often, scrape mm -hmm. down. Scrape down, okay, good. So it's good to be a freak about this? It's totally, when it comes to okay. baking, yeah. when it comes to cooking, absolutely. I do, All so right. now I'm going in We're whipping and again. I'm gonna go straight up to fast, right? Yep, that's it, you're doing it. We could take this time and grease our baking dish. Okay, now I'm like, maybe I should just do this. Done. See, what we're gonna do now is work the batter together by alternating dries and wet. Well, okay, so do, do a little dry, a little wet. Yeah, maybe a third at a time. Okay, okay here we go. Now we're gonna do this a, a little. Slow, nice and really slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't want to bit it all in my face. That would be fun though. Now add a little. Add about a third. See how it just comes together? Mm -hmm. Now stop, we'll go alternate oh, okay. back to. Yeah, the whole idea here is good incorporation mm -hmm. without overmixing. Okay. Uh, flour, when overmixed, will create gluten. Gluten will give you a very tight crumb, okay. and we don't want a tight crumb. Never so. want a tight crumb. Boo! Boo tight crumbs. Or a little this much. Yep, and like you can go about, a little more now. So. Like that? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Should I be spatula -y? Uh I think is this is a good time to maybe stop and give it a scrape down. Yeah, I think so. I have a scrape thing here. Just not as bad, yeah. though, because it's liquidy. It's, You're but doing still. It. Okay. And I think we're at the point now that we're a third. You can just dump, dump it all in. in there. Yeah, for sure. So we're at that point where the batter can handle kind of the rest of the ingredients. Okay. No problem. How do you know that? Uh, I'm looking at the mass it's become, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's stable. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. So How'd you get into cooking anyway? My family immigrated in the 60s. We had restaurants in China. So our grandparents had restaurants, parents had restaurants. There was really it's nowhere in, else for me to go. It's in your jeans. Yeah, it's, it's called not being good at school. No, did you grow up cooking? Yeah, so I worked in our grocery stores as a butcher, oh, as wow. a produce guy. Oh my gosh, that's how you know so much. So I did it all. Get in there and let's get all, okay. all kind of the... Just make sure I really yeah, got it mixed really in Really well. kind of a, like use the that blade and almost fold. There okay. you go. And now I'm just gonna pour it in. Do you have that's any all. pouring techniques? Um, you know, not really. Okay. I, I, I don't, I just try to kind of cover and then tap, tap, tap. Okay. And if you're one of those people like chunky cornbread, mm -hmm. like jalapenos yeah. or corn, uh, this is kind of right before we won't go into the pan. You can, okay. you can incorporate all your, Besides what would you put in? I would, bacon? Yum. 
Oven wise. Yes. 400 degrees. Okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. After 20, about 20 minutes, I would check with the little uh, cake checker. Yeah. And we've done it. Shall I bake? Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Savannah, we've done so much. Oh my gosh. The slaw is ready to go. We got the cornbread. I think it's time to pull out like the brioche buns and start to build lunch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go check on the pork. Okay. I'll bring it over. And then here we go. Wow. Ooh, that looks awesome. It looks incredible. Oh man. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna shred. Right. Shred, okay. Yeah, do you allow? Yeah, And I'm cool. putting on my plate. Just put it right on your sheet pan okay. there. All of them are, you take three, I'll take three. Whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Oh, geez, it's falling apart. Yeah, isn't that, well, well, first. Is that a good thing? Let's just enjoy how, how I mean, soft and tender that is. It is, oh my gosh, it's like uh, melt in your mouth. Man, this is, this is what braising does. It okay. takes a tough piece of meat and turns it into something that feels and tastes really expensive. Okay. Uh, okay, lots of options here. The double fork thing. It's show me. So it's hurt. literally just shredding, okay. and oh uh, it's personal preference. I like kind of a, a chunkier pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Allie likes kind of a very fine pulled pork. Okay. So that's that's house rules. What okay. I call house rules. So what does Savannah say? House, house the house rules are what Allie says. Yeah, yeah. There you Whatever go. Whatever your wife says, I, I agree with. I just want to eat it right now. <laughs> Just oh, really? Savannah? Put a bib because on. I have your box of spoons. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, love it. All right, I get to taste it. Yay. You have to taste every layer because okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to morph a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes. Really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. I like it. So once it's shredded, mm -hmm. um, do you mind putting that barbecue sauce oh, yeah. into all this delicious kind of pan sauce? This whole made? thing? The whole thing goes okay. in. Mm -hmm. I'm just stirring it up, right? You're stirring it up. And then we're gonna marry uh, the pork back into the sauce. So it gets almost like another base thing. I Great. can't believe I made this. What are you talking about? It looks so good. You killed. Okay. Savannah, pulled pork is ready. I'm gonna go get the cornbread. cornbread. All right, yeah. here we go. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Save me some. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is pretty. I'm gonna put it on your trivet. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. You can let this cool in the pan. You yeah. can eat it warm. You could flip it out and let it cool and get crispy edges, whatever okay. you want to do. But for today, I think we're just going to serve it as a side. So do you want to carefully take that butter knife and then cut it into squares? Yeah, should I? Yeah. Dial, yeah. Tile slice dice. You go, girl. Yeah, and if you don't mind placing it in this uh, yeah. tin. And we've made honey butter, mm. which is basically room temperature butter. Yeah. Swirled honey in there and a little bit of flake sea salt I mean, on top. That sounds delicious. It's easy to make things fancy. Should we taste? Yeah, we're, you always we have to taste every Yeah, layer. we don't need spoons for this one. No, here, I'll give you a little Thank bite. Thank you very much. Thank there you. you. Go. I'm mm -hmm. so good at that. Look at that. Look at the crumb. I mean, the crumb. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the no crust. Gluten there. What? No, exactly. Right. <laughs> What's gluten? Mm. There's no gluten. Mmm, it's so delicious. Mm. Shall we build? Yes. Okay, so here is the slaw that you made. Okay. Here is, this is a brioche bun. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to do a little bit of uh, sauce. You can go really big if you want. I'm gonna yeah. go manageable today. Me too. Okay. We have yeah. to eat on TV, so we don't wanna be like. <laughs> exactly. Okay, right. so you do that. And we'll just do some slaw on top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do you barbecue sauce the top layer uh, or no? Yeah, I totally would. Why I... not? Okay, yummy. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Making a sandwich, that is something I mm. know how to do. All right, Savannah, look These what look we good. did. That looks excellent. Load them up. Load them up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to the table and, and, and kind of recap and eat lunch. Okay. All right, you got this. You want to give you this? I'll grab this. Okay. Okay.
Oh, here we go. Come on. Go. Let's go. Pulled pork, slaw, cornbread. I mean, this is a perfect summer meal. It really is. Um, also, a lot of techniques to take with you. Yeah, for right. sure. Braising, I mean, that was incredible. Good. Okay, but let's eat. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry with liquid food. I'm oh, yeah, exactly. I, I can relate. <sighs> you hit me with the piece of cornbread. I got you. Oh, I Thank gotta you. try some of that butter, you too. Absolutely, this is my favorite. Really easy to kind of fancy mm -hmm. up. So good. Mm. This cornbread melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh, man, that, that, when you cream that butter, it just really lightens up this whole thing. Tell Allie I like her cocktails, too. Mm, I will. She's invited over. <laughs> this is delicious. Not good? Mm -hmm. I like these plates because they're, well, it's a messy kind of, it's like a trough. We need some of those wet towels. <laughs> I'm yeah. into that. Um, you know, it's very barbecue inspired, right? Yeah. And these are really inexpensive. Anyone can go to a restaurant supply store, uh, get what, what these are called, like eighth sheet pans mm -hmm. or quarter sheet pans. Uh, you get some fancy decoration, and it's really just tiny little moments mm -hmm. that, that turn your dinner parties into something fancy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good that is. Mm. And you don't have to make a sandwich out of it. You could have just done some coleslaw, some chips, eat that, with a fork. That's the whole idea here is like mm -hmm. you have a little barbecue lunch without smoking things for 12 hours. Yeah. And the pork is savory, it's sweet, it's kind of luscious, the slaw with the acid. It's really a knockout combination. It's all working. Yum. Jet. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You are a very patient teacher. No way, you're an outstanding it. cook. Thanks, mm. Savannah. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. Good morning, guys. Welcome to The Boost. We're diving right in today with a 12-year-old phenom who not only loves cars, but also loves teaching other people about what is going on under the hood. And he recently welcomed Al Roker inside his garage. I'm obsessed with cars ever since I was not even born yet. Giuseppe Ayatarola is 12, going on 30. A cup of black espresso might help oh, this oh, situation. Oh, here we go again with the coffee, see? Oh, it never ends. The preteen automotive phenom has amassed more than 200,000 followers on his Instagram channel at Giuseppe's Garage. Giuseppe, what do you got going on here? So here's the basics. Where he shares tips about car maintenance and repair. When I first taken cars apart, I was probably about six years old, more or less. So I'm very familiar with cars being taken apart. Basically, I have the magic touch. That magic touch is hereditary. Giuseppe's dad, Luciano, has been in the business for 31 years, opening his shop, Lucky's Auto Body, in 2008. The industry is changing big time, big time. So it's going to be a, even harder for a, for a young kid to actually get involved with the collision work or the, or the mechanic work. But the Ayatarola family is hoping Giuseppe's online presence inspires a new generation of auto enthusiasts. I see a new driver. Let's say they're driving along to get a flat tire. They don't know how to change the tire. So I would like to be there to show them how, because if a six-year-old can do it, why can't you, you know? Then you divide. Giuseppe splits his time between homeschooling and working at the body shop. Mom Rachel helps keep that motor running smoothly. He's a straight A student, even taking high school level math. Do your trick gonna, with the two wrenches. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I love the job. I can't. He can't get me out. He hasn't missed a day. If I season. have a cold, let's say if I'm sick, I'm still in here. He I have would to fight like with him. Just do like, something. No, I you can't. Know. I gotta go paint the fender. You know. Luciano understands his son's commitment to shop time, having grown up wishing he could spend more time working on repairs. When he came along, I, f I figured I'm not going to do that. As long as he's doing good in school, he can come to shop. Giuseppe keeping up his end of the bargain and then some. Just this year, being hired by the PBS show Motor Week, the youngest host in the show's history. He actually got one running for them. There was a 1964 Renault Dolphin. And I'm like, I can get this running. They started laughing, you can't get this running. The whole valve train was all seized. I got everything loose. Boy, you know what the car was running. Though he's still at least four years away from getting his driver's license, Giuseppe learned to drive before he could even touch the pedals. Put the seat all the way forward. I was putting a, can of, a gallon of antifreeze behind him because the seat was too big, so he wouldn't slide back. And has his first car all picked out. Actually, 
he still has his first car, and that's the one I want as my first car. And he always wanted it a certain way. He's so nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to fix it, and that's what I want my first car to be. What, what else can I expect out of a kid? He's perfect. I wouldn't change a thing. I can see how much he does for me. I think to myself, how do I um, thank him? Like, what do I do to make it up to him? Keep doing everything you're doing, and we'll, we'll both be just fine. Okay. Deal? Yeah. Deal. Deal. Up next, the story of a unique and talented artist whose medium is Mother Nature. After a health crisis forced her to rethink how she could continue her passion for art, she started using materials she found in nature, leading to a new body of work and a brand new life. Chanel has her story. Literally since I was five, I knew what I wanted to do. Vicki Rollins says she was born an artist. When I was creating, I felt my most whole. But her most important work isn't made using a canvas or paints, but rather leaves and flowers. So I feel like I'm painting with the foliage. Mother Nature is her canvas. Foliage is her muse. You have this tree that is literally just like bleeding flowers or all these leaves that anybody else would be like, those are dead and mildewed. And I'm like, no, they're perfect. Every time I get out of a car when I'm at Costco or CVS, I can't help it. I just start picking stuff up. And once she photographs the portrait that will become a print, it's all swept away and recycled back to nature. Vicki's flower art blossomed at the end of a long and painful journey. In 2011, her two kids were grown and she had wrapped up a career as a successful mural artist in Chicago. I'm sort of at this great time in my life. I'm painting in my studio, just hunky-dory. And then one day she was prescribed a powerful antibiotic for an ordinary bacterial infection. My world turned upside down. My whole body was just on fire, burning, and my, my tendons and ligaments. Such a reaction is called fluoroquinolone toxicity. It's a rare, severe side effect that can be caused by this type of antibiotic. I ended up in the hospital and seeing neurologists and all sorts of doctors, and there's really nothing that really they could do except for take steroids or painkillers. Her long-term prognosis was even more devastating. They were like, you're not gonna be able to hang on to things, you might need a wheelchair, I mean, you can go deaf and blind. And she realized she wasn't able to hold a paintbrush. It was terrifying, but at the same time, I have always had this sort of inner thing where I'm like, I'm gonna get through this, I know I'm going to be okay. Vicki began a meditation practice and a holistic healing journey that would last several years. And she credits her time spent as a personal trainer with knowing how to manage a body in crisis. I just never felt like I was a, a victim of something. I just felt like this is happening for me, not to me. Then I hit this point where okay, this is my new normal and I'm just gonna go on. Her first step was learning to paint again with a few small watercolors. And then, I don't know, I just started looking out the window and I'm, I'm going, wow, I could, I see these, these leaves across the street. On a whim, she made a portrait with foliage and wound up bringing her new medium to life. So it was pushing me out the door. I'm like, I need to go get some stuff and so, I'm gonna get outside and involve walking a little bit, maybe being uncomfortable or whatever, but I'm gonna get outside and I'm gonna start doing this. It was sort of self-prescribed therapy. Then I just got addicted to it. Vicki sent a photo of one of her creations to her daughter, Brooke, who recognized an opportunity. This was not anything to like sell or anything like that. This was just literally playtime, you know, and having fun. 10 years ago, Brooke convinced her mom to start an online business Sister Golden, which now includes a store and a book. And she said, well, we're gonna start with your artwork. And I was like, what? I haven't been doing anything, you know, just in survival mode. And she said, that's okay, mom, just keep painting. And paint, she did. I feel so blessed. And literally, um, the, the art is being sold around the world, everywhere. It's crazy, the people that write us and have been touched. When we come back, a doctor slash chef who may just inspire you to pursue your passion. 
will share the day that he decided to live life to the fullest. That's right after the break. on the boost and we are introducing you to a man who was a doctor by day and a chef by night with his love for both professions he kept trying to pick one dream over the other until he realized something he could do both so now he is living life to the fullest healing the body and feeding the soul Chanel has his story as well food is healing for your soul 100 percent Tom Lowe knows a thing or two about food and healing I've always dreamed about being a doctor. I've always dreamed about being a chef. Why not do both? An anesthesiologist by day, chef by night. Growing up, he loved cooking, even gaining experience in a bakery before heading to Yale University. Ultimately, he felt he had to choose one path. I told my parents, I'm going to defer med school to go to cooking school. And they, they said... I was so excited. They. Not so much, <laughs> but they knew I had this passion for cooking. So after you say, I want to do this, what happens? I moved to New York to go to the French Culinary Institute, and I just discovered this entire world of cuisine. Tom loved cooking, but was unsure of the stability of the restaurant business. So he worked in finance and was in the World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001. I was on the 73rd floor. And it was actually my 23rd birthday. I just heard this huge boom. The North Tower got hit. I was in the South Tower, and I started walking down. And a few moments later, that's when um, we got hit. And literally, uh, the, my tower started to sway back and forth. For about two seconds, I thought, if we go down, which I thought we were, I'm not gonna survive this. I gotta get out of here. So that's when I walked down. My mom said I had 23 angels escorting me down the stairwell. And that, that day wasn't, uh, wasn't my time. So I, I'm grateful for that. How did that experience change you? When you have a confrontation with mortality like that and you survive that untouched um, gives you a different perspective on life I try to make every moment count it would seem to me that one of the things the outgrowths of experiencing something like that is you, you can have more than one dream 100% that was probably the start of a moment when I started kind of realizing I need to go back into medicine. Tom went back to school, eventually becoming an anesthesiologist. Along the way, always reminding himself that food was his medicine. So Tom continued working in different kitchens until he finally opened his own restaurant in 2022. Chi, in New York City, running the business while attending to patients. What's your goal as a doctor and a chef? 
What I would love to do is actually bring the service side that I've you know, learned from hospitality into medicine. In terms of food, I would say many people in America, what they think of when, they, when you say Chinese food is beef and broccoli. Wonton soup. General Tso's General chicken. chicken, yes. <laughs> which is great, which I love. Yes. But there's so much more mm -hmm. to Chinese food than just that. And I would love to bring that more to the mainstream. Whether in the kitchen or in the operating room, Chef Dr. Lo gives each practice his all. Both of those take a lot of effort, concentration. How do you do it? It's a balance, time management. But also, in this life, there's, there's so many things I love to do, love to practice medicine, I love food, I love cooking. There's no reason not to do them. Coming up, football and faith. We'll take you inside the game with a very special member of the NFL with big dreams of winning this year's Super Bowl. That's right after this. Welcome back to The Boost. Every NFL team has its own playbook, but some players also turn to a prayer book and the team chaplain for inspiration. Savannah Sellers spent the time with a beloved member of the Baltimore Ravens staff who plays a vital role on and off the field. For many, Sundays are a day dedicated to football and to faith. And it is not for them, Lord, it is for your glory. But few people combine the two more fully than Johnny Shelton, team chaplain for the Baltimore Ravens. We're leaning on you, Lord, for your protection. A spiritual guide on the sidelines of every game, like Sunday night in Jacksonville against the Jaguars. Do most people know that this is a part of an NFL team? Most people don't know, which is a good thing for us is that you stay out of the way. Well, today's your moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's God's moment. <laughs> All 32 NFL teams have a chaplain, but the Ravens say they are one of a handful that have theirs in-house full-time. The blessing is being able to be in the building full-time. Things that just come up where people need to talk or they want advice. Johnny has been with the team for a decade, in addition to scheduled Bible studies for different groups, like coaches, players, and even their significant others. Johnny's door is always open for counseling. What are the types of things that the players come to you about? They come to me with football pressure, family pressure, relationship issues. Life is hard enough. And at the flip side of that, football is hard enough. So when you put those two together, it's, it's just, it's, it's crazy. 
Johnny makes it easy for players to seek him out when they need him, doing a prayer walk around the training fields at the start of every practice. I pray for, for the safety, for their minds, their hearts to be clear to be able to focus um, on the task at hand. And, and they will literally come up and some of them will ask for prayer personally. And so it's a, it's a right special time. Right here on time. the field. Yeah. Yeah, right here as we as we're going going as I'm coming around. The same is true on game day when Johnny will pray with players individually on the sidelines and collectively as a team in the locker room. So right before we go out to take the field, the last thing we do is we pray as a, as a team. Johnny's message resonates with players of faith, like three-time Pro Bowl defensive back Marlon Humphrey. Football comes up occasionally, but it's it's mainly just life, different things going on, relationship. Even sometimes when it is football, it's it's more so just how can you be more of a leadership role? As well as with former player and current assistant coach Anthony Weaver. We're football coaches, we're football players. We assume we're alphas, right? Mm -hmm. We can we can solve and we can figure out everything. And you it's not natural to turn to somebody for help and for guidance. He makes that easy. You mentioned some of the players that aren't Christians. Is your door open to all faiths, all beliefs? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm here to I'm here to love all. We're not going to disciple everybody. So whatever their faith is, we're, we're here to love them. That's what Jesus did. The influence of a chaplain is felt throughout the NFL. Once a month, the chaplains across the league have a Zoom call together. Those are my guys. I know them very well. We're able to lean on. We're, we talk with each other. The league chaplains also shepherd one of game day's more touching traditions, a post-game prayer circle formed by members of both teams. The chaplains call it, meet me at the 50. We will pray together, just thanking God for to be able to have this competition to play this great game of football. From the football field to the tailgate. Earlier this year, we uh, teamed up with New York Giants legend Eli Manning, a two-time Super Bowl MVP, to host a little get-together over at MetLife Stadium. The guest of honor, an incredible group of young warriors deserving a game day full of surprises. On any given Sunday, there are more than 82,000 New York Giants fans getting ready for the big game at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. And this Sunday, we were four of them. Go, Giants Stadium tailgate! Yeah. Come on, go low! Right. Oh. And right away, we proved that we should not quit our day jobs. My Roker! Oh! Right here, SG! Okay, go long, go long. Go real long. Ah! All right, let's bring it in. Bring it yes. in. Okay. Okay, guys, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Where's the food? We need the drink. Right. Yes. The food. Yes. Uh, and football. Football. Oh, let's do it. Tell yeah, what we're here. Yes. <laughs> I just thought. Yeah, here. Food and drink. Let's go. Oh, this. Let's go. Woohoo. Woo. You look so cute. But it wasn't all fun and games, at least not yet anyway. All right, let's go. You got those? It's chicken. There we go, hot dogs. We had a Good. tailgate to set one. up for some very special mm. guests. Ketchup, relish, all the fixings. You guys are going to sit there while we work? Well, we did it. Okay. Looks like we're ready. Yeah, let's cool. go. I think we got things to do. And ready? people to see, really some, important people. Some special guests? All right, let's go. Let's Shall do it. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, so we reached out to the Tackle Kids Cancer Initiative to invite a few courageous kids currently in treatment at Hackensack Meridian Health Children's Hospital in New Jersey to join us. And lucky for us, we had five special guests to give a giant welcome to. We wanted to make sure that Dominic, Shane, Jaden, Riley, and Jabari knew this wasn't just any ordinary tailgate party. Do y'all know that this guy right here is the guy who makes the food for the Giants before every game? And this wasn't just any tailgate spread. It was prepared by the Giants' own executive chef, Angelo Bassalon. He fuels the players, and now he was fueling us. Here you I go. Have to have chicken finger than a cupcake. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. It's going in. I can feel it. Oh! Let's go, Jaden. Let's go, Jaden. We said. 
This wouldn't be an ordinary tailgate. And we were about to deliver on that promise with one more very special guest, legendary Giants quarterback and two-time Super Bowl champ, Eli Manning. For the last eight years, Eli has been a huge advocate for Tackle Kids Cancer. Tackle Kids Cancer, how did that become the cause? For me, just visiting, uh, visiting the hospital, um, you know, years ago and just wanted to do more. You know, at first it was just making, trying to get a, a few smiles on these kids' faces that are going through a tough time and then said, how can we raise more money? How can we, you know, do a better job of getting these kids back home? You're yeah. an amazing football player, you're a legend, but the bravery of kids, yeah. the bravery yeah. that they have to face something so young mm -hmm. and take it on. It's, it's unbelievable and they have the best attitude and that's why they're going to beat this. Well, you're doing amazing stuff. So here we are, a tailgate at a Giants game. How does it feel to be on this side of the game? I like it. You do? <laughs> really? Very good. No one's going to hit me today, hopefully. <laughs> Eli, we've counted the number of people, fans who are here, who have Eli Manning tattoos. Oh my goodness. Full face, <laughs> yeah. your signature. Oh, I appreciate them. The support I've had yeah. uh, while I was playing, uh, yeah. post playing, yeah. has been unbelievable here in New York and loved every moment. Right. And the kids were loving every moment with Eli, and we were all about to love him even more. I got a little special surprise for the five of you. Here in a minute, we are going into the stadium on the field and get a little uh, on field uh, <laughs> breakdown, get to see the players run out a little bit. And uh, how's that sound? That sound good? Yeah. Follow Eli. Walking onto the field was a magical moment for both the kids and the kids at heart. Eli took us all the way to the 50 yard line where he recruited a new line of wide receivers. Where's that run? Just run two steps and go that way. I'll throw it to you, right? Now it's a hut. Get your pass. Get Come on, Jabari. Oh. <laughs> yes! That's on Dan. That's on Dan. But their feet weren't about to touch down anytime soon. Eli had one more surprise. The Giants have y'all a suite at the game. So we're staying for the game and all gonna be Woo! in a suite together and get to watch, uh, watch the game tonight. Food, drinks, there's a dessert cart that comes around Ooh. with the second quarter. Really yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Soon the stadium will be filled with tens of thousands of fans roaring for their heroes. But in this moment, it was clear who had the biggest hearts on the field. Tackle Kids Cancer on three. One, two, three. Tackle, Tackle Kids Cancer! Cancer! Yeah! Coming up, we got the latest viral video. It will boost your day. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Boost. We got one more video for you. It'll leave you with a smile. Take a look. 
A reunion at the hospital between two sisters and their baby brother. So three-year-old Kenzo, who has Down syndrome, was recovering from a seven-hour brain surgery. His big sisters were nervous. They couldn't wait to see him, so Kenzo's dad arranged for a surprise reunion right there at the waiting room window. Oh, see, that's boost. Uh, there you go. How about that Feel one? The boost Look at those faces. Right yep. Ooh. When they saw Kenzo through the window, they lit up. Uh, surgery, by the way, complete success. Kenzo recovering well and will soon be in his sister's arms. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Boost. It's been filled with some positivity, just a way to start your day off right. And guess what? We will see you next time with more right here on Today All Day. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with us now. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Shop All Day contributor Chassis Post and I Know Trends. Each week I'm here with the must have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Lovu and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day, January Reset. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Happy New Year, everyone. You know the saying, New Year, New You. Well, it's true. For many January is about resolutions and resets, and we have you covered. Making their mark all over social media to must have elevated everyday items that will add ease to your routine, whether your new goals are in the kitchen or the gym. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Let's start with beauty in the new year. So this bestseller from Kiehl's can help give your under eye a new lease in 2022. This is their creamy avocado eye treatment and all I can say is thank you. It may be small in size, but it sure packs a big hydrating punch. It is just so creamy and so rich and it's really perfect for this time of year when we're all combating drier skin and what I love about it is it has ingredients like avocado oil and beta carotene and even shea butter. So there's a lot to love with this little Kiehl's eye treatment. Next, it's winter, and we know the feeling of dry hands. So if giving your nails a little TLC is part of your list of beauty resolutions, this cuticle oil is for you. So it's called the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, and it's actually made with cold-pressed oils and vitamins that is designed to blend and help give intense hydration to your cuticles and your nails, whether they're brittle or cracking or just super dry. But one of my favorite things about this cuticle oil is that you can also use it on your skin. And we're washing our hands all the time these days, so that's really helpful. Now, I am really excited about this next one, which I've 
personally tried. I mean, talk about an easy skin upgrade for the new year. This is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF 50, and this is a multitasking cult favorite wonder. And it's essentially a tinted moisturizer, or I guess you could call it even a moisturizing foundation. And I've always really been excited about the idea of a tinted moisturizer, but I've never really been able to find one that had the right amount of coverage. So when I tried this little CC Plus cream, I cannot tell you. It was like a eureka moment. It gave me almost instantaneous full coverage, but it felt really, really light. And it didn't look like I was wearing a ton of makeup. Also, it comes in 12 different shades. Okay, New Balance has once again taken the sneaker world by storm with one of the hottest, most talked about sneaker designs of the past two years. Sneaker fans, meet the New Balance 327 and it is seriously stylish. It actually launched on the runways in Paris. And what people are loving so much about this sneaker is its retro style. It's got a total 70s vibe. But what's so cool about it is it's made with high-tech materials. So you're getting that retro vibe and modern day comfort. It's angular, it's got great suede details. I love the sole. It's pretty much a platform and who doesn't like a little lift? And I think one of my favorite things about the 327 is all the great colors. Today we've got this bold orange with the forest green logo, this lavender with the metallic silver, and these purple, which really to me look like very Perry, which is the Pantone color of the year for 2022. Now, this next one is something that I hadn't seen before. It's an exciting new take on the puffer, and you're gonna wanna add this to your winter uniform this year. It's from Old Navy, and it's called the Packable Half Zip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket. First of all, it can do a really cool party trick, which I'll show you in a minute. This material is so warm, it's so light, it's not bulky, and I am so jazzed about the silhouette. It's oversized, which we're seeing so much of now. It's got the great drop shoulder and it's long. It really hits at a flattering place on the hip. Plus, it's got the high-low hem longer in the back. So this gives you a little bit more coverage. It looks great with leggings. And it's really versatile. You can easily layer this. Now, let me show you the party trick that I mentioned. See this little pocket here? This entire jacket can fold down and fit into this little pocket. So it's packable. So you can throw it in your bag and go. It's great for travel. It'll fit in your suitcase. This is a really cool jacket. Now, another useful cold weather piece to invest in this new year, the puffer vest. Layer it, live in it, or just love it. You'll want to wear this versatile down vest from Land's End every chance you get. Talk about an affordable upgrade. I cannot get over the price on this one. And this little vest has style and substance. Let's talk about these bold colors. They are so on trend. I don't know which one I like best. Plus, these are actually really flattering and they have a couple of cool features. First of all, they're tailored. But secondly, they have this shape enhancing stitching. So see this stitching here? They kind of look like rectangles. That's called baffling. So if you notice on the front, it is a wider baffling. On the side, the stitching and the baffling is more narrow. So it gives this slimming optical illusion. So we talked about the style, now let's talk about the substance. These babies are made with genuine 600 fill power down. So that means weightless warmth. Yep, three cheers for these little puffer vests. They really do elevate the everyday. Last but not least, let's talk about one of my all time favorite solutions to looking cool while staying comfy, the sweat set. So let me tell you what I love about the set. So each of these are fantastic in their own right. We've got a crew neck top with a sort of oversized silhouette. It's cropped, it's flattering. We've got the new 
high-waisted jogger, but when you put these two together, you get an outfit. Suddenly, you've got instant elevation. It looks so stylish. It even almost looks like a jumpsuit. And what I love so much about this is we're still super comfy. We're still wearing sweats but it kind of doesn't look like it. And these crew necks and joggers are so incredibly soft. They're made out of a French terry, and Gap has even used this great washing technique that makes these feel like they're vintage or well-loved. So when you put them on for the first time, they kind of feel like you're already wearing your favorite pair of sweats. So I'm really loving all the fun fashion-forward colors and I can't wait to get in my sweat set <laughs> and enjoy 2022. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment, the Cuccio Natural Milk and Honey Cuticle Oil, the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Cream with SPF, the New Balance 327 Sneakers, the Old Navy Packable Half Sip Water Resistant Quilted Jacket, the Lands In Puffer Vest, and the Gap Sweat Test. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, McCohen Logu is talking to trend expert Brittany Levine about her favorite items to stock up on for the new year. And later, Jen Fallick tackles more must-haves, whether your resolutions involve the kitchen or the gym. Don't go away. and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. And today's show is all about kicking off the new year with a reset. Style and trend expert Brittany Levine is here to help us 
start 2022 right. Brittany, it's so good to see you. Did you have a good holiday? Yes, it's so good to see you too, Mako. It was wonderful, well rested, and now I'm ready to dive into January and everything that that means, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now, before we get into January reset, let's talk about the fact that you have this adorable baby boy. Did you enjoy the holidays? Did you do anything special? Yes, well, we were able to go down and get a little warm weather with him, and it was just great to spend the time with family and just have everyone around being healthy and safe, so that was really cool. Did you have a good holiday, too? I did. It was really nice to be with family, just like you. So because this is all about the January reset, Brittany, I'm just curious to know, do you have any specific traditions that you had at the top of the year? I do like to do some things in terms of resetting, you know, my meal prep. I like to start really doing clean eating and then also trying to get as organized as possible because I feel like when you are organized and things are all settled around you, you work harder, you do better. So that for me, it's like little things that help me get more done along the way. So let's start with the first item. This was great. Tell me all about them. Well, you know how when you are taking your vitamins and your supplements, they're in these really ugly packages and they hurt your hands. But what Moomi has done, this company, is created these color-coded packages here that are by day. So you have every day of the week in a specific color, you put your vitamins and supplements in there and you throw them in your bag and they're airtight, they're really perfect to keep everything nice and clean. And I just love these because it keeps them all together. It keeps them organized. And that way, you know exactly what you're supposed to be taking on each day. And this is all from Moomi Design. They have some great pill pouches in larger sizes and smaller ones too. Okay, let's move on to the next item. One of the things I love to do during the course of the year is get my nails done, but it's expensive to go to the salon. It's so time consuming and you've got this great solution. So tell me about the Manny Rescue Kit. Yes, okay, so this is from Gloss Lab. They created their proprietary kits here that really are aimed to just save every issue that you have with your nails. This is a Manny Rescue Kit. So if you have a chip, if you need a little bit extra polish, if you need to smooth something out, they have everything in that kit there for you that just comes in these cute little pouches. So again, something easy to just reset, throw in your bag and go all from Gloss Lab. How adorable is this? Like one of my goals for this year, Britt, is to travel. So I love how small these are. Okay, let's move on to the next item. This wash buff bar is so cute, but how does it work? So we're talking about the sponge gel infused buff bar yeah. right now. So this is amazing because you see that it comes in this gorgeous flower design, but this gives you a chance to exfoliate, cleanse, and moisturize your body in up to 14 washes. And we're talking about a body reset here because when you really exfoliate, exfoliate your skin, that's when you give your skin the chance to glow. So this is by Sun Gel, their body infused wash buffers. They're all available at Anthropology for $16. They're super easy to just hang on to your shower, cleanse your skin, and they come in all of these gorgeous scents, Mako. This is the Freesia Pear, absolutely stunning. It's gonna really create that spa-like experience in your bathroom, and I know not a lot of us are getting out to the spas right now, so if you wanna do that for you, reset at home and give yourself that pan experience, this is what you need. I love that, and it's like a two and one, so it's such a space saver, it's a time saver, I absolutely love that. Okay, so let's move on to electronics. Everyone can relate to this, you got wires all over the place. I love that this next item can keep you organized. Exactly, I like to keep everything organized. So in order to reset your life in terms of your electronics and all those different cords, this is a case from Ganamoto. You can get it on Amazon, $45.99, and they come in different sizes. All you do is just slip all of your wires in here, basically organize them by area. You can also put your chargers in there as well. So this is something that you can have everything in one place. And then when you are going to look for something, because I'm always losing the cord for the specific item, you know where it is, right? It's in that specific yeah. place, it's in that compartment, and then you just zip it up, and you're uh -huh. good to go. So How perfect is that? This is going to be a lifesaver for you and your family if you get one of these. Speaking of lifesavers, all about January Reset, we're trying to save you money. And when it comes to groceries, I want to keep my groceries fresher and keep them nice and organized. And I am so obsessed with these meal prep containers. These colors are so cute. Aren't they amazing? So oh. these are the Elo Dura Glass containers. 
They come by color coding and they're glass. So when your food is stored in glass, it really preserves the food longer. It keeps everything airtight. It's also BPA free. So you just put your food in there for the week, prep it, you're ready to go. Load these in your refrigerator. If you want to take these, I'm going to go with you too. You have this silicone coating that surrounds the glass to keep everything safe. Stack them up and you've got your meal prepped for the week. I mean, it's not it's easier than that, right? That is so clever. If you're starting to go back into the office and you need uh, organizers, meal prep containers, these are so classy. Well, we're, I feel like I'm ready for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for joining us on our January Reset. I hope you have a great sparkling 2022. You as well. Thanks so much, Luca. All right, now let's run through all the products one more time. The pill pouches, the Gloss Lab Manny Rescue, the Spawn Gel Box Flower Body Wash Infused Buffers, the electronics case, and the glass food storage meal prep containers. Up next, Jen Fowler continues with the January reset. Whether your reset goals are in the kitchen or in the gym, don't go away. Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick. Welcome back to Shop All Day, where we're talking all about that January reset. We have must-have products, whether your New Year goals are drinking more water, spending more time in the kitchen, or making more me time. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to all the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Upping your daily water intake can be key to reaching your health and fitness goals, which is why so many of us are making the resolution to drink more water in 2022. And this water bottle could help make all the difference. Check this out. So 
This is a water bottle that has a time marker, but unlike many similar products, this water bottle is actually really sleek looking. You can bring this with you out and about all day long. You could bring it to a work meeting. It fits in the cup holder of your car. It's just like a fashionable, great accessory item that happens to also help you achieve your hydration goals. All you gotta do is stick to the markers, refill at lunchtime, and by the end of the day, you will have downed half a gallon of H2O no problem. There's different colors. I love the metallic tops too. Easy to clean. These are genius. Another great way to stay on point with your health, wellness, and fitness goals is to get into the smoothie lifestyle. I am a huge fan of smoothies because for me, they're so delicious. They're really filling. And with this product, they are so easy to make. This is the blend jet. And all you got to do with this charge it up it's usb rechargeable so every full charge is going to give you 15 smoothies that you can blend up anywhere anytime on demand you throw this in your bag and you literally put in whatever you want to mix in your smoothie i love to put in some berries a little milk maybe a little protein powder if you're in the mood and you don't even need a cup because you can drink right from the top of the jar it's small, but this is a mighty. There's a patented turbojet technology in here that blends some of the toughest foods in 20 seconds flat, according to the brand. Comes in a ton of fun colors too. I love the little turquoise here, the blue. This is such a great gift for a fitness fanatic. Do you have anyone that you wanna gift to this month? But for yourself, this is a must. Now, if getting to the gym is part of your 2022 plan, we have an elevated essential that you need to own. Check out this duffel exercise bag. It can really feel overwhelming to pack up for the gym when you have a full day ahead of you. I love that this has compartments for everything, so it's so much easier to pack efficiently. You've got the spot for your water bottle, there's a spot for your sneakers. You know, there actually is a separate shoe compartment. You can also attach your yoga mat up here. And I love that there's a waterproof compartment in here. So after your workout, you can store your workout where in there until you've got a chance to throw it in the laundry. We cannot ignore the fact that this bag is cute. I love the quilting. I love the gold zipper detail. It's got a crossbody strap so you can tote it around hands-free. All the options. Now that we have your fitness hacks handled, let's talk about meal prep. If that was one of your resolutions, we're gonna start with this Herb Saver Pod. I am madly in love with this product. I own three and they are always in my fridge at all times. This preserves your herbs and it saves valuable space in your fridge. All you do is you rinse and dry your favorite fresh herbs, be basil, mint, oregano, dill, and you place them right inside the pod. Then there's this little spigot on the back. You just add water to the bottom and these herbs will be good to go for up to three weeks. In addition to herbs, I put asparagus and scallions in these. And you save so much money too because there's less waste. Now that you have a fridge stocked with delicious fresh herbs, enter the herb shears. Check these out. I absolutely love these. The fact that I can literally chop fresh herbs right into a salad or right on top of chicken is huge. You can just snip and savor the most delicious meals. Plus, these are so easy to clean. They come with a little comb that you can basically brush through to get any little bits and pieces out, give it a quick rinse under the faucet, and then throw them right in the dishwasher. It couldn't be easier. Now, planning ahead is the key to changing your life with meal prep, but you need to be ready to store all the staples that you make. And bulky containers can take up way more space than we have to spare, right? Enter these collapsible containers, ready? These are stackable and collapsible silicone containers. They're great to store all kinds of food. You can put your leftovers in here, you can put your chopped up prepped veggies. These have a snap on lid. Snap it on, you know when it's nice and secure. And when not in use, you can collapse them down to one third of their original size, right? So this is what they collapse down, so easy to store. Besides saving space at home, if you're taking a snack to go, once you're done, flatten them out and You've got more room for everything else that you need to bring around with you every day. This next product is another one that we swear by in my house. These reusable lidded bowls have a sturdy lid that has a really secure wrap. So it's easy for all ages from my six-year-olds all the way up to open and then when they're done to reseal. All you gotta do, put the top right on, 
and easy to clip it right around. It's leak proof and it's sleek looking. So this is sophisticated enough for me to take with me if I'm going to like a work meeting. This looks like a beautiful high-end bowl, but totally portable. Now, to round out the resolution trifecta, the next thing everyone's thinking about right now is getting a better night of sleep. So first up is a white noise machine. I love this white noise machine because besides drowning out environmental noise, white noise can become part of that bedtime ritual that really helps to cue your brain and your body that it's time to wind down. This machine right here, so little, right? It has 20 sounds to choose from, including ocean, rain, bonfire noises, if traditional white noise isn't your thing. And it has a little timer right here, so if you want it to auto shut off after an hour, you can. Or if you prefer that white noise to last all night long, it'll work that way too. Another thing that's important to note about this, again, is the portability. I find that when I'm on a work trip or if I'm away with my family, having those little reminders of my nighttime routine on a daily basis really helps me to fall asleep. And now that we've set the ambiance with the white noise, the sleep eye mask is the last thing you need to complete the moment, and this one is a gem. Light is super disruptive when you're trying to sleep, both falling asleep and staying asleep. And while you cannot always control the environment around you, with this sleep mask, you can control how it affects your rest. I love the design. Some sleep masks can feel claustrophobic. They really press down on your eyelids, but not this one. With this, you've got the little openings here so your eyes can breathe and blink. It's memory foam as well, so it means you're gonna get a custom comfy fit every time. And beautiful colors too, it just feels great. It works wonders, it's a no-brainer. Now let's go through these products one more time and you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the water bottle with time marker, the blend jet, the exercise duffel bag, the herb saver pod, the herb shears, the collapsible containers, the reusable lid and bowl, the white noise machine, and the sleep eye mask. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's a wrap on all your better basics and for our show. It's been fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Over the years, I have been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. We had made that pesto, which was, oh exactly. darn. Well, you know, I almost got out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook. But I'm putting those days behind me for good and I'm starting to find a little confidence in the kitchen. Today, Chef Jet Tila is going to bring the heat and teach me a few tricks for an easy at home barbecue. We'll be making pulled pork sandwiches with an Asian apple slaw, plus a side of hearty cornbread. I am feeling ready to tackle this one, so let's get started. I'm so happy you're here. It's great to be here. I'm glad that you want to learn to teach me foundational stuff because I don't know anything. Have you heard? I don't buy that, Savannah. Oh. I've been watching you cook and come. you've come a long way. So what do we do? What's our All plan? Right. Our plan for today is season the pork, sear the meat before braising, cut the vegetables and mix the dressing for the slaw, make and bake the cornbread, shred the pork, assemble the sandwiches, plate and serve. Our barbecue brothers are gonna get mad at us yes. for calling this barbecue. We are um, creating a version of barbecue in the house by braising. Barbecue technically is smoking something for a very long time until okay. it breaks down. Okay, no okay. smoking. Braising is, like, what does that mean, really? Very simply stated, we're gonna take a tough cut of meat mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to cook it uh, slowly with a little bit of liquid so all of the toughness breaks down. Yeah. We're gonna cook the crap out of we're it. We're gonna cook the crap out of it okay. and make it delicious. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mince an onion. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, I don't mince. I have minced before. Have you diced? Oh, yes. It just means smaller dice. Okay. That's all it means. This is one thing I learned. Show me. When you have a round thing, do you, you gotta oh, make oh, a flat side. Oh, I'm gonna show side. you another way. So can you cut down? Yeah. The all the, all the way through. Okay, yes. Just okay. Leave, it, leave it connected. I gotcha. Like this. Okay. You're totally killing it. 
I'm... My, what a sharp knife this is. <laughs> Isn't that sharp, though? For yeah, real. it does make it easier, assuming you don't cut yourself. Now, we're going to come inwards now. You see, we're going to follow the lines. Yeah, okay. You lead with the tip down, and then and then rock. You know that rocking oh, motion? Oh, yeah, see? okay. Oh, see how that yeah. feels? Yeah, uh -huh, I do. You're a great cook. It's just all about believing <laughs> you're a great cook. You're, you're killing it. You are a sweet talker. Nope, it's the truth. Look what you're doing. You're going to make me cry, or maybe <laughs> it's just the onion. Yeah, okay. it's... Definitely the onion, okay. definitely the onion. Are these mincy enough? Those are beautifully mincy. And we're gonna teach you to do a dry rub. So dry rub is basically a, a seasoning mix that yep. goes on a uh, piece of beef for barbecue. We're gonna apply it to the braise. Okay. Uh, so. Brown sugar. Brown sugar, how about? Oh, you're one of those put a piece of bread in <laughs> brown sugar. How much? Uh, we're gonna go three, two, one. So three tablespoons, okay. so salt, two. Okay. And again, that you can. That's a lot of salt. And this is coarse salt, I uh, see. I mean, I know it seems like a lot of salt, but it is for four pounds of pork butt. I like paprika. Mm -hmm. That was coriander. Okay. That was ground coriander. This, this is, is like garlic. garlic powder, yeah. yeah. The one pepper. Yeah. One pepper, yeah. You can either whisk it or stir it or whatever you want. You Look can, at that. You just made a driver, so you gotta just taste everything. Even the rice. Go easy, you can go easy if you want. Oh, that's delicious. What do you think? I Isn't like that it. nice? Sweet, a little bit of um, savoriness. Nice. Then we're gonna use you <laughs> pork butt. I like to say pork behind. <laughs> you know, my mother watches this show. That's right, that's right. There, you, okay. grab it, you grab it, open it. We'll talk about the actual muscle. Pork yeah, booty. Want, the pork booty. All right, pork so. Pork rear end. There are so many words for that part of Isn't the anatomy. There, um, Pork, pork tushy. The irony is it doesn't even come from that part of the pork. It doesn't? No. Well, why do we call it pork tushy? Uh, so if you look at the shoulder here, right, of, of the four, the yeah. four end, the four end shoulder. Two hoofs. Two here. hoofs right here. So this is, um, uh, there's two shoulder, there's two pork shoulders, mm -hmm. right? The lower part is called the picnic, which is more the upper arm, okay. right? And this is actually up here. It's the most versatile, in my opinion, uh, cut of the pork because it's got the perfect fat ratio. Mm -hmm. It's got perfect connective tissue. It's great for this. Okay. And what we're gonna do is cut it into six equal pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna take my butt right here. <laughs> <laughs> take that butt. Oh wait, we haven't had a sip. Uh, we always drink on starting from scratch. Cheers. Cheers to cheers you. Cheers to you. We're drinking a... Um, French 75. This is my wife's play on it. Um, nice. It's a hibiscus flower. So gin, honey, mm. hibiscus, and champagne. That Cheers is to you. delicious. Cheers. And to Mrs. Tila. To, uh, to all family. Yes. Yeah, those will get you in trouble. Woo! Super easy to drink. All right, we're liquored up. Let's get the knives and the yeah, pork out. So I'm really... just going to cut six equal pieces. Yeah, you can do it that way. You can do it this way. Well, what would three. you do? I would, I, so in my mind, I'm always thinking a, a tile becomes a slice, a slice becomes a dice. That's like my overarching guidelines. So it's a tile mm -hmm. right now, right? Okay. And the tile becomes a slice, which is all two long pieces, and then the slice becomes a dice. And look at you. You got six pieces right there. Even knife cuts are critical for even cooking. The tile becomes a slice, yep. which then becomes and a then the dice. And then the slice becomes a dice. And do it thrice. <laughs> there One, you go. One, two, three. See, look at that. Okay. And that way, um, you kind of, uh, it's a regiment mm -hmm. to, to tell yourself how to cut things. That's gorgeous. Is this good? Yeah, that's These perfect. guys aren't too big? Okay. Nope, not at all. I'm following your lines, but okay, this yeah. is fun. So now the spice robe. I like to kind of season in this tray. Show me your technique. I, I'll do one. So I'm like, I'm not being shy. Like, mm -hmm. I can, you can use all, all this. There's sides. one way. Here's another way to do it. Let's it, go to town. Good. Can I ask a dumb question? There's no such thing, oh, Savannah. Sorry, another dumb question. Dumb question alert. There dumb question alert. <laughs> well, like, could you ever, it's so tasty. Could I put it on a vegetable? A thousand percent. Okay. Is now, would fine? you like sprinkle the rest? You wouldn't you want to. Go, go, go. Yeah, like go. just sprinkle. Get See? in there. Um, okay. It's about feeling your way through it. And mm -hmm. if you didn't taste that rub, yeah. you wouldn't, you'd be a little nervous to apply some. Right. Here. Okay. Like we can wash I'm, hands. Since we touched raw pork, yeah. I will clear and wash hands. Raw How's pork, rub. We're okay. doing great. And I'm going to crank up uh, your Dutch oven mm -hmm. and get that going. Let's talk about braising really quick. First thing we're going to do. <laughs> All right, don't leave me hanging, girl. Here. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry. Together. I just want to celebrate every step. Perfect. Okay. Um, first step is always going to be browning your protein. Okay. Right? Uh, Hot pan. This is not there. a cast iron. This is a oh, no. Dutch Say oven. It. Uh, it is, so put those two together. It is a cast iron Dutch oven. Oh, okay, How's great. That Lovely. Yeah. Um, enough oil. You can measure if you want, but I'm. I, we, for me today, we're going to cook by feel. Okay, I like that. Now, it's hot. Do it's, I wait for the oil to get hot and start bubbling or anything? You know, you can always wait for a little bit of white smoke. Yeah. You can actually do a test. So why don't you take a piece and kind of touch it. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the ch we're in good shape. It's not a very wide tongue. Right? Okay. Here, little. You hear the ch 
I hear it. I totally now, how hear many, it. Like, am I, is this a don't crowd the pan situation? This is cold. This is hot. It's always don't crowd a pan situation when you're browning something. Let's okay. talk about some basics while we're waiting for the brown. Number one, uh, don't we don't mess with it. Another thing we're building, a concept of fond. Have mm -hmm. any of your chefs talked fond. about F-O-N-D, fond? No, fun, fun. but not fond. Yeah, fond. Yeah. Fond. fond is fun. Fond. It's a fabulous. What is it? Um, if you lift that piece up and we yeah. look into the pan, you see the bits that are sticking? Yes. Those are gonna become beautiful, crispy bits mm -hmm. that later we're gonna pull up and incorporate into the sauce. Okay. Think about fond as foundation of flavor. Girls just wanna have fun. That's exactly okay. right. Now, is this one of those deals That's where you gorgeous. sear on all sides? Is, is, you want and I'm gonna have to prop it up? Yep. Okay. Look at that. Look at that guy. That is now that's we're talking. exactly what we want. Let's get the next contestants up. Absolutely. Can I put it right back on I here? I totally think you can. I think that's going to be somewhat controversial out in the world. Okay. But remember, team, at 165 degrees, yeah. everything is, is And sanitized. just relax, everybody. It's yeah. Chef Jet Tila. I, I like think he that. knows what he's doing, See? okay? So don't get all worked trust up about it. Trust us. Trust. Don't trust me. Don't but trust, trust Savannah. Him. Okay, these look good. Let's start building flavor. So okay. how about a little bit of that onion okay. first? Now you can start scraping that okay. fond. Scraping up the bits is releasing of the fond. There you go. It sounds, more, it sounds sexier, doesn't it? Release the hounds. Release the hounds. Okay. We're going to make the braising liquid now. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to do red wine. Okay. Okay. Um, and you could be any alcohol, but yeah. red wine is going to go with this kind of darker, richer braise. Okay. So whenever just, you're doing alcohol, just a really good tip because this might be hot and it might flare. There's a small chance. So take a half step back. I like to just put the lip of the bottle here oh. and just pour away. I yeah. don't know what it. Uh, enough cup to is. kind of coat the bottom. Like, see how we're almost is to the that bottom. Good? Now we're coated the bottom. That's it. Good. Okay. See how easy that I is. I do. Okay. Yeah. And now you can scrape. Use that. Now you've deglazed. You're officially deglazing. Deglazing. Yeah. All the day long. Once you feel this pan smooth. Yes. You've done a great job releasing the font. You're done. Okay. Okay. Um, now we're gonna build liquid more. Okay. All right. And uh, this is fun. Is that fun? Yeah. Cola is excellent for braising. I. We'll stand on I, that. So is that next? Cola? Yeah, that's next. Yeah. Crack that can okay. and give us about a half cup or a cup. The carbonation, the caramel, the sugar, the phosphates. I mean, that's so interesting. Isn't that fun? Do you think that's enough? Beautiful right there. How fun. Right? Um, and now... Did you I, just make that up? No, no. I use cola to braise carnitas to braise uh, short ribs. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you think about the, the flavor of, of, of the cola. Yeah. Now, all right, now we're gonna add the, the pork back in and we're gonna add okay. more liquid, Okay. but we need a visual cue. We need to know okay. how much. So now, go. am I gonna put all of these guys now, in Now, all here? of it goes in now. It does, Because okay. we're not worrying about crowding the pan. Mm -hmm. See the rate of boil? Yes. I want to simmer. There's hardly one any more. room for this big old That's, piece of butt. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our fundamentals of braising, liquid can never be higher than halfway up the protein. Okay. Okay, so that knowing that, we need barbecue sauce. Am I All tasting right. the barbecue sauce? I think, remember, Jet Tila says taste every taste layer. Taste everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, taste everything. So knowing, I'll get rid of mm, it. I here. like that. And am I gonna stir it around so it's everywhere? Yeah, yeah. Perfect right there. Do you think we're halfway up the biggest pieces of protein yet? I don't know, I don't wanna get the wrong answer, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say yes. I say we're almost there. Okay. Because okay, now we're gonna account for three hours of braising okay. and some reduction. Mm -hmm. So maybe a, a touch of chicken stock. Okay. A touch of chicken stock. So chicken I don't need too much. No. The chicken stock just sort of to get us to the level we want. That's exactly right, okay. Tina. That's All exactly right. right. We're done. Okay, but don't I need to stir it up or Just anything? a little bit. Because you know what's gonna happen at 325 degrees, mm -hmm. it's gonna simmer in, in the pot. So it's This looks stir. amazing. I'd eat it right now. I'm to gonna the oven take it goes. Away. 325. I want to make sure that the uh, the brazier is in the middle of the oven. So set your rack oh. so when the when it's in, it's right in the middle. Okay. And then see you later, braise. Bye.
got three good. hours to kill. What should we do? Uh, I think we need to make the Asian apple slaw. Okay. Which we're basically in a cook's in a cook's mind just how to make coleslaw. Okay. But we're gonna start with a, about a cup of mayonnaise. Okay. All right. What does slaw taste like to you? Flavor, yeah. Um, like hot, the little, sour, salty, sweet, or savory. Acidity. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Like acidity. Yes, yeah. Why don't right. we start with sweet? Okay. And again, uh, we're so gonna be. So you put a little using, honey. How much? I'm gonna go two tablespoons here. Do you know your your um, your your conversions yet? How many teas into a table? Of course I don't. No big deal. We're just gonna learn one today. Okay. I think three teas to the table. Oh, you know what? Huh. I never knew that, and I've always wanted to know that. There you go. So, uh, we've got soy sauce and sesame oil. Okay, that's one, a tablespoon. One each. Okay. One each. And I'm using soy sauce here because it creates salt, creates um, a little bit of umami, the mm. savoriness. If you don't want a soy sauce, go salt. Okay. Now, sesame oil, same thing, one tablespoon. One cup of rice vinegar now. Oh, okay. We're going to work that in slowly. I'm going to get the lumps out. That's wow, dressing. That's nice. Should we right. taste it? But it's so important. Oh, I love that. Is that nice? Toasty, yummy. Oh Good. my gosh, I love that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you wanted more sweet, you know where to go. If you want more salt, you know where to go. Yes. Again, intuitive cooking. Chop, chop time. Uh, I'm going to start with the cabbage. Okay, this is the intimidating cabbage. We've had. We've had some issues with cabbage before. Talk to me. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Yeah, tame and the beast. If it's tame the beast, then it rolls around on us less. Okay, great. woo! If I were to think about everything as tile, slice, dice, yes. I would think this is the tile. Okay. And then what if this was the slice? Okay, I'm not sure I understand that. So but me, okay. I'm just saying like half the half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This is the spine of the knife, mm -hmm. right? You're bunched up against the board. If you took a half step back, mm -hmm. you give yourself more room to breathe. Mm -hmm. And if you made sure that spine was flat, mm -hmm. think about perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. always gonna have straight cuts. Oh, you're just sort of using I'm a just visual using, guide. That's it, it's, a, it's a, like see. a landmarker. Okay. Julianne apple. Julianne apple. We're looking for about that eighth to quarter of an inch pieces. Is this it, if I'm doing these round slices? Yeah, okay. because uh, the, we're gonna end up with a matchstick. So oh, we'll okay. take that round slice, which and is And then our, make little batches. That's oh, it. Oh, I see. I lay them on top of each other. The stack height is totally up to your comfort level. Okay. And then what I do is lay them up, and then same thing. We're uh -huh. done with apple. Okay, good. And now we're going to go to carrot. I flatten round things, boom, like that. Mm -hmm. And then I lay them on their flat side. Mm -hmm. Now that, oh. that keeps us from getting cut. Okay. And, and a carrot's gonna give you a lot of resistance. Tile slice dice. Tile slice that dice. That means first mark it out, then yep. slice it, then chop it up a little That's bit. That's it, because. Okay, now I see what you mean. So now we can toss it, right? Yep, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Would have been good if we had a bigger bowl though, right? <laughs> so I would do just a good pinch of salt. You mean then... salt and then turn, salt yeah, and turn. exactly. Oh, just a good, a good thing of salt right now. Done. Okay. And then we'll turn. And then turn it. But that's not going to make it all too salty? Like no, nope. that's more. perfect right there. Yeah, because that's why we tasted the dressing first. Yes. So we know kind of how much salt we need. Mm -hmm. That looks awesome, Savannah. Okay, this really does look good. I think, I think we can sesame now. Just um, like sprinkle, yeah, sprinkle. Just zhuzh, 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 and then do another toss. Okay, good? Yeah, looks okay. beautiful. Yes. So we're going to let it chill a little bit. Chill. Yes, chill, chill. Chill. See okay. you later. Bye-bye. Bye, bro.
pulled pork's braising. Yep. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, the slaw is relaxing. And then we're going to get to cornbread. I like to break it into different um, components. So we're going to okay. do dry, wet, cream butter. We right? got the flour. Yeah, so why don't you throw cup of in a um, cup of cornmeal. Yeah. Here you do want to measure. Yes. Right? And That's one thing I do know from baking. Yeah. You kind of have to be on it. Okay. There you go. Four and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Um, you got it. And okay. I usually consider um, salt a dry. Uh, uh, yeah, I would. But here's a good tip. Like usually when you're creaming butter, uh, sugar's not a dry. Like your cookie recipe. Sugar right? goes with the liquid. There it is. Okay. One teaspoon kosher salt. Okay, you these it. are dry. Whisk them. Let's whisk them together. Okay. Now you're going to do the wets now mm -hmm. in uh, that large measuring bowl. Okay, so. You're going to start with eggs. And one thing I learned is you don't do it on the edge. Yes. So that was one thing. Look at you, man. Mm -hmm. You got this. Now I did yeah. learn on one show how to do the one hand crack. Should okay, I try say, it? Do that. Do the, save the last one, please, okay. for one hand. <laughs> But it's a real messy situation. There you it's go. not real. Yeah. Like, second hand got in there late. Okay, so work in progress. So let's whisk up those eggs okay. until uh, mm -hmm. totally together where you can't tell if it's white or if it's yolk. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely. And then I'm gonna fly in your milk. Okay. There it is. One and two thirds cup. Mm -hmm. Pour it right in. Pour it right in, whisk that together. Okay. And you basically separated your dries. Mm -hmm. You've got your wets. And I'm gonna bring in the mixer to cream butter. Have you creamed butter? I have not. Okay, this is important. This is a really good concept okay, to learn. Okay, so is this done enough? That's Ready? lovely. Okay. We'll put it to the side. Oh, I love the mixer. Okay, creaming butter. Yes. Uh, oh, first, do we need to get acclimated with the mixer? I actually know this mixer. Okay, good. I have this mixer. Okay. We're gonna go to the paddle. paddle. It says 12 tablespoons of butter. That's one and a half sticks. Yep, so yeah. save us half a stick for, for, for greasing the dish. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and I see this is room temp butter. Yeah, which is really important, team, mm -hmm. that you can't cream butter that's okay. not room temp. Then we need now a cup of sugar. sugar. Yep, okay. a cup of sugar. Low so, first. Low. What we're doing here is using the sugar, mm -hmm. because it's coarse, to whip air into the butter. Okay. That's all we're doing. This is gonna give you a really light, fluffy Fluffy, cornbread. okay. That's period, so now you go higher. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is color. Oh. It's a pale yellow. Uh, it's gonna start to become one fluffy, beautiful mass. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna get even more pale. Now, I can get obsessive about pushing stuff down Which, on the side, should thank, I? Thank you for mentioning it, because it's so important. So let's turn it off mm -hmm. every so often, scrape mm -hmm. down. Scrape down, okay, good. So it's good to be a freak about this? It's totally, when it comes to okay. baking, yeah. when it comes to cooking, absolutely. I do, All so right. now I'm going in We're whipping and again. I'm gonna go straight up to fast, right? Yep, that's it, you're doing it. We could take this time and grease our baking dish. Okay, now I'm like, maybe I should just do this. Done. See, what we're gonna do now is work the batter together by alternating dries and wet. Wow, well, okay, so to do a little dry, a little wet. Yeah, maybe a third at a time. Okay, okay here we go. Now we're gonna do this a, a little. Slow, nice and really slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't want to bit it all in my face. That would be fun though. Now add a little. Add about a third. See how it just comes together? Mm -hmm. Now stop, we'll go alternate oh, okay. back to. Yeah, the whole idea here is good incorporation mm -hmm. without overmixing. Okay. Uh, flour, when overmixed, will create gluten. Gluten will give you a very tight crumb, okay. and we don't want a tight crumb. Never so. want a tight crumb. Boo! Boo tight crumbs. Or a little this much. Yep, and like you can go about, a little more now. So. Like that? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Should I be spatula -y? Uh I think is this is a good time to maybe stop and give it a scrape down. Yeah, I think so. I have a scrape in here. Just not as bad, yeah. though, because it's liquidy. It's You're but doing still. It. Okay. And I think we're at the point now that we're a third. You can just dump, dump it all in. in there. Yeah, for sure. So we're at that point where the batter can handle kind of the rest of the ingredients. Okay. No problem. How do you know that? Uh, I'm looking at the mass it's become, mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's stable. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I'm looking for. There you go. So How'd you get into cooking anyway? My family immigrated in the 60s. We had restaurants in China. So our grandparents had restaurants, parents had restaurants. There was really it's nowhere in, else for me to go. It's in your jeans. Yeah, it's, it's called not being good in school. No, did you grow up cooking? Yeah, so I worked in our grocery stores as a butcher, as wow. a produce guy. Oh my gosh, that's how you know so much. So I did it all. Get in there and let's get all, okay. all kind of the... Just make sure I really yeah, got it mixed really in Really well. kind of a, like use that blade and almost fold. There okay. you go. And now I'm just going to pour it in. Do you have any pouring techniques? Um, you know, not really. Okay. I, I, I don't. I just try to... Kind of cover and then tap, tap, tap. Mm -hmm. And if you're one of those people like chunky cornbread, mm -hmm. like jalapenos yeah. or corn, uh, this is kind of right before we pump, go into the pan. You, mm -hmm. can, you can incorporate all your. Besides what would you put in? I would bacon. Yum. 
Oven wise, yes. 400 degrees, okay. 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. After 20, about 20 minutes, I would check with the little uh, cake checker. Yeah. And we've done it. Shall I bake? Let's do it. Well, let's do it. Savannah, we've done so much. Oh my gosh. The slaw is ready to go. We got the cornbread. I think it's time to pull out like the brioche buns and start to build lunch. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go check on the pork. Okay. I'll bring it over. And then here we go. Wow! That looks awesome. It looks incredible. Oh man. Okay. Um, okay, so now we're gonna shred. Right? Shred, okay. Yeah, do you allow? Right. Yeah, And I'm cool. putting on my plate. Just put it right on your sheet pan okay. there. All of them are, you take three, I'll take three. Whatever you wanna do, whatever you wanna do. Oh geez, it's falling apart. Yeah, isn't that, well, first. Is that a good thing? Let's just enjoy how, how I mean, soft and tender it is. It is, oh my gosh, it's like melting your mouth. Man. This is, this is what braising does. It okay. takes a tough piece of meat and turns it into something that feels and tastes really expensive. Okay. Um, okay, lots of options here. The double fork thing. Just show me. So it's hurt. literally just shredding. Okay. And oh uh, it's personal preference. I like kind of a, a chunkier pulled pork. Mm -hmm. Allie likes kind of a very fine pulled pork. Okay. So that's that's house rules, what okay. I call house rules. So what is Savannah's house, house rules? The house rules are what Allie says. Yeah, yeah, there Whatever you go. Whatever your wife says, I, I agree with. I just want to eat it right now. <laughs> Just oh, really? Savannah? Put a bib because on. I have your box of spoons. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, love it. All right, I get to taste it. Yay. You have to taste every layer because okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to morph a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yes, yes. Really good. Mm -hmm. mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. I like it. So once it's shredded, mm -hmm. um, do you mind putting that barbecue sauce oh, yeah. into all this delicious kind of pan sauce? This made? whole thing? The whole thing goes okay. in. Mm -hmm. I'm just stirring it up, right? You're stirring it up. And then we're gonna marry uh, the pork back into the sauce so it gets almost like another base thing. I Great. can't believe I made this. What are you talking about? It looks so good. You killed. Okay. Savannah, pulled pork is ready. I'm gonna go get the cornbread. cornbread. All right, yeah. here we go. I'm gonna drink. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. Save me some. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous. That is pretty. I'm gonna put it on your trivet. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. You can let this cool in the pan. You yeah. can eat it warm. You could flip it out and let it cool and get crispy edges, whatever okay. you want to do. But for today, I think we're just going to serve it as a side. So do you want to carefully take that butter knife and then cut it into squares? Yeah, should I? Yeah. Dial, yeah. Tile slice dice. You go, girl. Yeah, and if you don't mind placing it in this uh, yeah. tin. And we've made honey butter, mm. which is basically room temperature butter. Yeah. Swirled honey in there and a little bit of flake sea salt I mean, on top. Sounds delicious. It's easy to make things fancy. Should we taste? Yeah, we're, you always we have to taste every Yeah, layer. we don't need spoons for this one. No, here, I'll give you a little Thank bite. Thank you very much. There Thank you. you. Go. I'm so mm -hmm. good at that. Look at that. Look at the crumb. I mean, the crumb. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, the no crust. No gluten there. What? No, exactly. Yeah. What's gluten? Mm. There's no gluten. Mmm, it's just delicious. Mm. Shall we build? Yes. Okay, so here is the slaw that you made. Okay. Here is, this is a brioche bun. Mm -hmm. I kind of like to do a little bit of uh, sauce. You can go really big if you want. I'm gonna yeah. go manageable today. Me too. Okay. We have to eat on TV, so we don't wanna be like. <laughs> exactly. Okay, right. so you do that. And we'll just do some slaw on top. Okay. And then do you barbecue sauce the top layer uh, or no? Yeah, I totally would. Why I... not? Okay, yummy. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Making a sandwich, that is something I mm. know how to do. All right, Savannah, look These what look we've good. done. That looks excellent. Load them up. Load them up. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get to the table and, and, and kind of recap and eat lunch. Okay. All right, you got this. You want to give you this? I'll grab this. Okay. Okay.
Oh, here we go. Come on. Go. Let's go. Pulled pork, slaw, cornbread. I mean, this is a perfect summer meal. It really is. Um, also, a lot of techniques to take with you. Yeah, for right. sure. Braising, I mean, that was incredible. Good. Okay, but let's eat. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry with liquid food. I'm oh, yeah, exactly. I, I can relate. <sighs> you hit me with the piece of cornbread. I got you. Oh, I Lunch. gotta try some of that butter, you too. Absolutely, this is my favorite. Really easy to kind of fancy mm -hmm. up. So good. Mm. This cornbread melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh, man, that, that, when you cream that butter, it just really lightens up this whole thing. Mm. Tell Ali I like her cocktails. Mm. I will. She's invited over. <laughs> this is delicious. Not good? Mm. Mm. I like these plates because they're, well, it's a messy kind of, it's like a trough. We need some of those wet towels. <laughs> I'm yeah. into that. Um, you know, it's very barbecue inspired, right? Yeah. And these are really inexpensive. Anyone can go to a restaurant supply store, uh, get what, what these are called, like eighth sheet pans mm -hmm. or quarter sheet pans. Uh, you get some fancy decoration. And it's really just tiny little moments mm -hmm. that, that turn your dinner parties into something fancy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how good that is. Mm. And you don't have to make a sandwich out of it. You could have just done some coleslaw, some chips, eat that, with a fork. That's the whole idea here is like mm -hmm. you have a little barbecue lunch without smoking things for 12 hours. Yeah. And the pork is savory, it's sweet, it's kind of luscious, the slaw with the acid. It's really a knockout combination. It's all working. Yum. Jet, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You are a very patient teacher. No way, you're an outstanding it. cook. Thanks, mm. Savannah. Cheers to us. Cheers to us. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. It is the start of a brand new year, and what better way to set the tone for a great 2024 than with a half hour of feel-good stories, and we promise they will leave you smiling all day long. So let's begin, of course, with Al Roker. We all love him around here, but we are about to introduce you to a little guy who may actually be his biggest fan. Take a look. Sunday, Sunday! Mama, it's Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> then Sunday, Sunday! of the week, maybe the year, yeah. two-year-old Justin Gunter Jr. and his obsession with Al's famous line. Okay, after we showed, showed this video, we shared it, we knew that we had to get Al and Justin together. Guess what? It's all happening. Justin's here along with his dad, Justin Sr., and his mom, Shelly. Shelly, by the way, part of our NBC family. We're so happy that you're here with us in South Florida. You're an anchor on NBC6, just down from Miami. But guys, we're just missing one person, Justin. Who are we missing? Oh. Who's oh. here? We're missing somebody. We're missing somebody. Come see. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> Sunday! Hello, <laughs> Justin! <laughs> How are you, buddy? Give him a hug. Oh, oh, my little Sunday, Sunday yes. guy. Look what he has. Thank you. Five. Yeah. How's it going? Oh. Yeah. What's that? Oh, is that your dinosaur? Yeah. Yeah, so you like Sunday uh, Sunday? Oh, oh, oh it's my oh. kitty. What? Oh, it's okay. Oh, good. Kitty. They turn the TVs off just so you don't keep looking at it. Is that okay? No, he's like, no, turn the TVs off. Are you excited? Justin. Can you show us your excitement? I want to hear the kitty sound. You want to hear the sound? You want to hear the sound? Yeah. Sunday, like, Sunday sound? You want to say it with me? Yeah. Okay, let's say it together. One, two, three. Sunday Sunday. <laughs> Can we try, Justin? Can you want to say Sunday, Sunday? Can we try together? Let's do it together. Well, Ready? It together. Okay. Right, <laughs> you are very skeptical. <laughs> One, two, three. Say it. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> He's like, no. He's like, oh, no. Only, in, my, only hey, in the comfort of my own home. He said, Justin's singing, I'm no trick pony. I don't, I don't perform on your command. Way, but you're, seeing you on that flat screen might be. Yeah. Justin, say it again. Sun Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> okay. This is when he whispers it. And this, and this is the mommy that says, 
the Sunday, the Sunday, Sunday. Okay. Oh, you need mommy. To Sunday, hide? Sunday. Jesse's turn. But nothing happened to do it, but. Oh, Daddy has to do it. Yep. Sunday, Sunday. And Justin's turn. What? Oh, no, I'm fine, Justin. Yeah. So was he always just saying this around the house? <laughs> this really happens. And that's why we started filming it, because we realized uh, during the days that he wasn't saying it, and, and Al, we, he's asking for it, and I caught myself YouTubing <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Al Roker, and I couldn't find anything. So that's why I started recording initially. Oh, and I had a, uh, this compilation of all these videos, and we thought, okay, we have to do something with this. And he's only two years old. He's only two. This is wow. amazing. Right. incredible. Wow. And congratulations, you're expecting Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Another Sunday, Sunday thing. Yeah. Yeah. We can't help it. I, I was thinking, are we watching too much news at home? He doesn't ask for that's amazing. PJ Masks or Papa Joe. Yeah. Sunday, Sunday is what he's asking oh. for. PJ Masks, Papa Joe. Yeah. Uh, Justin, we love you. We're so happy you came PJ to see us. We love having you. Now we turn to a very special third grade class in Miami with a devoted teacher and football fan trying something new to motivate her students. The now viral lessons are touching families and fans all across the country, and it all began with some basic number crunching. Sam Brock has this story. Happy Friday! Happy Friday! If you're going to step foot onto Mary Martinez's field of play, AKA her third grade classroom. Have the Dolphins played the Jets yet? Yeah. Yes! Students better bring an open mind and a keen sense of sportsmanship. Because as the penalties posted on the door reveal, how we treat others is the name of the game. Where did this idea come from? I've loved sports all my life. And as I started in third grade, I noticed that there was an interest more in sports. And while I love the Dolphins and I want them to be perfect like 1972, the losses are my favorite part because it's where the lessons come from. It's where we are able to learn and to grow. And that's such an important thing for the kids to understand. Football for you is a metaphor for teaching them life lessons. Yes. Earlier this season. I mean, how many yards did Tyreek Hill get against the Jets last time? The Pinecrest from Elementary from teacher became a viral sensation day. by following the sensational play of Dolphins receiver Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill on cue. Calculating his yards per game as Hill chases history and a 2,000 yard season. Ignacio has guessed Tyreek Hill's yards exactly. He's getting a no homework pass. Say way to go, Ignacio. Way to go, Ignacio. But these videos, filmed by a nine year old photographer, Nicholas, really exploded when Miss Martinez expanded her playbook and talked about how Jets injured quarterback Aaron Rodgers reached out to Dolphins player Jalen Phillips, who suffered the same brutal Achilles tear in the same stadium. To offer him support through his injury, to say, hey man, I've been there too. And she even gave her Jets towel from the game to her lone Jets student, Giovanni. I know what you're thinking. <gasps> you have a student that's a Jets fan? Yes, I have a student that's a Jets fan. If that moment touched Giovanni. I even showed him once on my phone where it just said New York Jets liked post and he was about to melt. Just imagine the emotions rushing through Miss Martinez's entire class when Dolphins players like Bradley Chubb started posting hey, videos. I just want to send a special shout out to you, Miss Martinez, and your class. Um, thank you all for the support. Then the Dolphins inviting Mary to Monday Night Football. And perhaps the culmination, the New York Jets surprising that one stalwart supporter. I open the box and there's this letter. And it's like an official Jets letter. And it's for Giovanni. And it says, we're so excited for you and wanted to send you this signed football from Brees, Garrett, and Quincy. J-E-T-S. Jets, Jets, Jets. So here you go, Giovanni. This is from the Jets. The proud gangrene fan fighting back tears. On a scale of one to 10, how happy would you say you are right now? A thousand. <laughs> <laughs> the teams in this case, casting rivalries aside for a teacher whose voice has transcended the gridiron. The game is so much bigger than just playing football. I mean, to some people it is just football, but to me it's, it's everything. You can learn so much from the game.
We're back here on The Boost with a special military reunion, two years in the making. It happened between a staff sergeant and his dog that he was lucky enough to call his partner. Morgan Chesky has more on their heartwarming moment. I trust him with everything I have and- With your life. With my life, for sure. And you have to because, you know, these are our partners. I instantly trusted John with his life. There's man's best friend, and then there's John. Now a 10-year-old German Shepherd, who for Air Force Staff Sergeant Mike Alcala was the canine companion who always had his back. John was an explosive detection dog. Your job is really about saving lives. If there's something around, he's gonna find it. No doubt about it. The duo worked side by side for three years at Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam in Hawaii, patrolling the base, local community, and even traveling abroad with the White House, working to sniff out any explosives. When was this photo taken? That was taken shortly after we got assigned together. But two years ago, Staff Sergeant Alcala's skills were needed elsewhere. And though he tried to have John move with him, it just wasn't possible. So John continued to serve on the island. Leaving him was, was rough. Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely hard. Harder than you anticipated? Oh yeah, much harder. Think about, you know, your dog at home, if you have one, you just imagine just walking out the door and just leaving them to someone else. It's very sad, but you know, you know they're, they're gonna be in good hands. And while John was in good hands, before Staff Sergeant Alcala left, he made his partner a promise. I told them when I was leaving there, I said, I am coming back for this dog. So when he learned John was set to retire from active duty after eight years of service, he went straight to his wife, Brittany. Brittany, any sort of negotiation that you uh, kind of leaned into? Gotta fix the backyard. Okay. <laughs> yeah. As the Alcalas got to work, the four-legged hero honored with a retirement ceremony on his own Hawaiian base, which included a special reading of the poem dedicated to the military working dog called Guardians of the Night. If we should meet again on another street, I will gladly take up your fire. Military working dog John, Whiskey 24A, is relieved from active duty service. John, humble as he can be, more focused on his toy than any attention. After the send-off, John packed up and headed to the airport with a handler from the American Humane Organization. Come on, buddy, let's go to Texas. Where he was celebrated once again, this time by the citizens he served. American Airlines, please join me in welcoming John on board. But no kind of accolade could compete with what was to come. Come here, Bubba's. Oh, look at you. Hi, Bubba's. Hi. Hi, Bubba's. Hi. Oh, how are you doing, Bubba's? Oh, my old man. Hi, Bubba. It's too bad. Welcome home, buddy. How does it feel to have your best friend back? It's amazing. Good old John wasting absolutely no time getting comfortable. <laughs> oh, he went to scratch his ass. Oh, he just wants some love, yeah. huh? And as Brittany came to say hello, she brought along John's new little sis, their 10-month-old daughter, Avery. Who is this? Is that your new best friend? A reunion well worth the wait for a loyal pup ready to live out his golden years. His next mission, this is about what it looks like. Yes. This, but on a couch or a bed. Yep. Well, he definitely earned it. Yeah, he did. Now to a remarkable 13-year-old making a difference, lifting up thousands of people in need. With the help of his family, donations, and volunteers, he's distributed thousands of care packages to those experiencing homelessness. Kristen Dahlgren has this story. Ethan Hill has a giving heart. So I keep up my motto of every day is a day to help someone in need, and that's how I, I, that's how I live. The 13-year-old has been helping those in need in Birmingham, Alabama for several years through his organization, Ethan's Heart Bags for Blessings. Ethan's Heart is my nonprofit that I started about seven years ago now. This services the homeless uh, community in Birmingham by providing them with the essential services needed to survive another night on the streets. We got enough toothbrushes, uh, hats, socks, 
gloves are all good. It all started back when Ethan was just six years old and noticed someone on his way to school. Every day I was passing by this homeless gentleman on my way to school and he lived up on the freeway. It didn't sit right with me. So that year I used my $100 Christmas money and I bought supplies for him and the others that were like him at that time. He was really happy, but um, he was humble. He was like, I don't, I don't need this stuff right here. You can take it. And he led us into the direction of other people who are in need. Since then, Ethan has expanded. Good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this morning? With the help of family, donations, and volunteers, Ethan's heart has distributed over 5,000 care packages to the homeless and those at risk of homelessness. Ethan even has a mobile store now, equipped with everything from food to sleeping bags, toiletries, and more. What you need? Yeah. I'm here today to, to, to receive some donations from Ethan Hart. It's a beautiful company, you know what I mean, for the homeless. And uh, I'm blessed. Ethan says giving right. runs in his family. Boom, there you go. It might be a little heavy, but he got you right. It really brings us together because uh, it's really something that uh, all of us have a passion for doing. We're all big givers. We give from the heart. Ethan knows that when he goes out, he's not just representing himself. He represents a village. That's just who our family is. It's the standard of giving and the standard of, you know, being selfless. How you doing today? It just takes that one time of you going out there and making a difference in someone's life. You are always going to want to come back to it one teenager making a difference in the lives of others. We try to get ourselves together. And they helped us out. Thank God for them. You have a blessed day, man. Welcome back to The Boost. Let's turn to a man helping fathers leave a legacy with a simple letter. As part of our Dad's Got This series, Craig Melvin sat down with his very special dad helping others open up by putting pen to paper. The first thing that we all have in common is that we have a superpower. And our superpower as a dad is our words. Blake Brewer has a story to share with every dad he meets, and it starts with how his life changed in an instant on a family vacation when he was 19. Just me and my dad standing on the beach. We're about to go in, go snorkeling, and he looks down at me with this big smile, and uh, he said, man, I'm glad you're out here with me. And we put on the snorkel gear and headed out in the water, and pretty soon we got to a pretty deep spot, and the current was really strong. And my dad started to struggle. 
Blake was able to swim his father, Larry Brewer, to shore, but after CPR attempts to save his life were unsuccessful, he was pronounced dead, leaving Blake in a state of shock. I'm back in the condo and my mom appeared in the doorway and she said, I found something in your dad's briefcase that I know he was gonna give you on this trip. It was a letter from his dad that he'd been working on for months and the words in it would change the course of Blake's life. Were there lines that stood out to you that still stand out to you? My dad wrote, as you're being faithful to the Bible, you're often gonna find yourself in the minority, but I assure you that in heaven, you'll be in the majority. Love your dear old dad. That line influenced Blake to follow a path into ministry and in 2020 to start an organization called the Legacy Letter Challenge with the goal of helping one million dads write a letter to their child like the one he had received from his dad. But if you could have one line repeating over and over and over again in their mind, what would it be? That would be your legacy line, and I recommend putting it last. At letter writing workshops like this recent one in Northwest Arkansas, Blake shares his mission and teaches dads how to make an impact with their own letters. Jarrett McClellan was one of the dads taking notes. They hear so much of our voice throughout their whole life that it sounds like a clanging bell sometimes. And when we have an opportunity to write a letter, it's out of the everyday norm. What are some of the concepts the dad should keep in mind when they're writing these letters? I love you and it's unconditional. I'm proud of you, not for what you've done. I'm proud of you for who you are and I believe in you. And as dads, like we see the potential that our children could be. Yeah. And it can be frustrating at times when they're like making mistakes, but we're never gonna shame our children into who they could be. Now that he's a father, Blake challenged himself to write a letter to his kids a couple years ago. And when you read them the letter, did they react? Yeah, so I decided to go ahead and read my uh, four-year-old her letter. And, you know, each night I'm you know, trying to read her a book or a princess book or something. And then that night I said, hey, daddy's got something for you. I am boohooing through this letter. And so I get to the end of the letter and I, I look up at her and she looks at me and she says, uh, daddy, can you read me the princess book now? <laughs> <laughs> but the next night uh, she went up to my wife and she said, last night, daddy read me a message. Can he read me that message again tonight? Wow. So far, Blake has helped thousands of dads write legacy letters to their children through his online and in-person letter writing classes. And he's still hoping to reach and surpass his goal of one million meaningful letters. Yes, it's about the, the son or the daughter that gets the letter. But it seems to me that it's, it's just as much about the dad that's writing the letter. I tell dads as you're writing this letter, like it's for you and your family, but each letter does honor my dad's legacy. If he had known when he had written that letter, the impact that it would have on my life, but now the impact that it's having on so many other people's lives. That's faithful. Yeah. Now to the inspiring story of a man who spends his days running a daycare in Philadelphia and his nights rapping on stage. He sat down with my friend Karen Swenson to talk about his mission, supporting families and sharing hope. This is Anthony Samuels, also known as Daffa. He spends his nights rapping on stage. But his days, well, his days are very different. They're spent here at Young With Options, a daycare founded and run by the 31-year-old rapper. What do I see up here? A fish. A fish. A fish. It's a business venture inspired by his own upbringing. I grew up in probably like the worst area in Philadelphia. It's in North Philadelphia. And where we are right now is one of the worst areas as far as crime and poverty. So they're very similar environments. My father was incarcerated some of my life and my mother, you know, she worked full time. Anthony was the first person in his family to graduate college. I would imagine that comes with a lot of responsibility. Absolutely. I can't do any wrong. I'm the one that, you know, you got to be doing good. The star boy, that's what my, my dad calls me. My dad calls me his golden child. After graduating, he became an accountant while he kept one foot in the music business. But the rapper soon realized that he had a different calling. Kids. 
he wanted the children of Philadelphia to realize that they too are young with options. Are you a father figure to many Absolutely. of them? Absolutely. I try to do more of like the big brother approach, you know what I mean? I don't want anyone to ever mistake me as their father, but I do try to be that positive male figure in their life. Young with Options is a daycare and after school program. They also have a dance studio where kids can come and be creative free of charge. Let's put one inside the water. Danelle Jordan's daughter spent the first five years of her life here. My daughter took her first steps here. She learned how to write her name. She learned everything here. So this is like home for us. Danelle is now the assistant director. I feel like a lot of people trust us in this community because I always tell people sometimes we have to understand where somebody is coming from or where they've been in order to be able to help them better. When did your daughter realize that Mr. Anthony is also DAPA? Oh goodness, we were in the car one day and my daughter was in the back seat and she's bobbing out to the music and then she sits up on her car seat and goes, that's Uncle Anthony. <laughs> and I was like, how do you know? She said, I know his voice. I said, well, on here, he's not Uncle Anthony, he's dapper right now. It seems like he's gifted that he can keep his eyes ahead, constantly climbing, and yet somehow keep his eyes behind him and bringing others up with him. If he's moving forward, he doesn't want nothing more but for everybody to be moving forward too. It's like the train is moving, get on, let's go. He's always carrying everybody with him. You not only provide a service, obviously, for the children, but for their parents, too. Absolutely. They're dropping their kids off and going to work, and they're working some long hours, and they're doing their thing as well. And we've dealt with families that have been in shelters. There's been families of four or five that's coming through here, and they couldn't fund their Christmases, and I've done that. There's blood, sweat, and tears in here, but there's a lot of your own hard-earned cash. Tell us about some of the struggles you have and what needs TLC around here. I would like to redo our playground. I think that would be great. It just so happens that we had a special surprise planned for Anthony and the children at Young With Options. Step two, what do you think about this? We'd like to give you $5,000 oh, worth of products to spruce up this area oh, here for the kids. Oh, that's love. You teach the ABCs, you teach music, you teach acting, you teach exercise and play. How do you teach hope? It's hard to teach hope without showing it. So I just try to make sure you can see me in a positive light at all times. So it's like, I can be happy even in my environment or even in my conditions. So if you're happy and you know, we clap your hands. Welcome back to The Boost. We've left time for one more video and it will leave you with a smile. Check it out. We're going back to Christmas morning, a real sweet, sweet reunion. So a California family moved houses last month. Somehow, one of the girl's favorite stuffies, the pound puppy was lost in the move. Taylor was devastated. But look what finally showed up in a package just in time for Christmas. Oh, no, 
so sweet. Is that not a Christmas oh. miracle? Oh. Taylor couldn't believe it. She was overcome with emotion. Her mom said, I just love this. Pure soul. Count yeah. Puppy's back. Is this? Oh yeah. That was a, oh, but you remember yeah. that one's worn out. That one she's probably had forever. Forever. And wow. she lost it. Oh wow. And here that's it was. New, it appeared. Again. Yeah. Ooh, that's very good. cool. That is all for us for today. We hope we're able to start your day off with a little positivity. And we will see you next time with more of the boost right here on Today All Day. Friday, we are wrapping up the first week of 2024 and back for another year of Pop Start Plus here on Today All Day. All episode long, we're going to be previewing the year to come from entertainment, books, sports. We've got it all covered. First up, what Pop Start Plus is all about entertainment. NBC's Chloe Malatz previews what to expect this year in pop culture. Good morning, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Like your sparkle. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and speaking of sparkle, these award shows, that we're going to have them, we're about into getting into award season now. I am so ready for award season, <laughs> especially with the strike that we had last year. Hollywood is back, and this month you have the Golden Globes and the Emmys. Mm -hmm. And I also, you know, we are going to get to the Oscars that are in March, and in between that sandwich in the middle are the Grammys, mm -hmm. Music's Biggest Night. But in terms of what you all need to be watching, if you haven't seen Barbie with Margot Robbie. If you haven't seen Killers of the Flower Moon, if you haven't seen uh, Ted Lasso, oh, yeah. okay, Succession, some of these I mean, shows and control. movies, Oppenheimer, remember Barbenheimer at the yes, box office? Yeah. It literally like shattered box office <laughs> records that weekend. Those are things that you really need to be watching. Well, let's focus on the Grammys. There's some girl power there. Taylor Swift, we expected. SZA really got a bunch of uh, Grammy noms. So SZA leading the way, yeah. one of my favorite artists with nine nominations, but you also need to be looking at Billie Eilish. Taylor Swift, yeah. we know she had a heck of a 2023 year. Mm -hmm. This year, she's already making Grammy history with the most Song of the Year nominations ever. How amazing wow. is that? One more thing for Taylor. And I also just want to point out, in the Album of the Year category, we have Olivia Rodrigo, obviously Taylor Swift, Janelle Monae, Miley Cyrus, um, SZA, a lot of girl power, like you're saying, mm -hmm. in music. So definitely need to watch that. Mm -hmm. Well, Usher's got a hot date. Uh, yeah. That's sure the does. Super Bowl halftime show. What do you know about that? So he gave this really sweet interview last year, and he said that when he got the call from Jay-Z, that he thought to himself, this is 30 years in the making. I have worked my whole career mm -hmm. for this. He ended his Las Vegas residency after two years, not that long ago. But he says that he's ready for this. And in terms of collaborations, which is what everybody is wondering, he hinted that, look, I've, I've worked with a lot of big stars. And so I have made my guess. Who? Of who I might think. Alicia Keys. He's Could collaborated oh, with yes, her. Yes, indeed. Justin Bieber. Justin mm. Bieber, yes. Ludacris. Uh -huh. Okay, so Luda. these are the ones that I think that we might see come out with him. All right, let's, uh, speaking of music, uh, a lot of great tours are still going to be continuing or kicking off in 2024. So if you didn't see Taylor Swift on tour, and mm -hmm. I was there in Seattle, not to brag, <laughs> for the earthquake <laughs> when it happened. I think I told your daughter yeah. that, right? Um, and I love trading those bracelets. So if you didn't get a chance to go in 2023 or see her, in the movie theater. You can go see her. You can see Madonna. I mean, talk mm -hmm. about, again, girl power in music. Madonna, the celebration tour. Taylor Swift, you're going to have to go to Tokyo, though, to see her. And then Olivia Rodrigo. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of other you know, country music concerts mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, I personally am excited for Blake Shelton's oh, tour. Oh, okay. Yeah. And Taylor's too. coming back to North America, I think, yes. later oh, she, in the year. She, Circling does back. she sleep? She's going to yeah. be going across the pond and back again. So you mm -hmm. will be able to catch her in states like Florida, too. Okay. Okay, and then real quick for binge watchers. Mm. Okay. Well, so I love this mm -hmm. upcoming show, mm -hmm. Masters of the Air, later mm -hmm. this month on Apple TV. It stars Austin Butler. It is about the mm. airmen of World War II, to um, to and it is produced by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. So that is one to watch. Something that I know that you guys might be excited mm. for, Bridgerton oh. season four. I'm waiting for and that. so we know it's going to come out in 2024. There isn't an exact date just yet. And then other shows that people are talking about right now, 
Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, it takes place after The Walking Dead ended, and we know there have been other spinoffs there, and that's on AMC. Um, and then you also have Avatar, The Last Airbender on Netflix, which is a live-action take, and people, as you know, love Avatar. So look, you are not yes, going to be we're, bored. We're, no, 2024. And you can have a lot of fun on your couch this you year. Can. I was going to say, couch potatoes rejoice. Oh, okay. yes. Check out another 2024 preview moment right here on Popstar Plus. The new year means a ton of new movies and shows to watch. Here to preview some of the biggest titles dropping this month, entertainment journalist, pop culture expert, and guy who used to work here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mr. Brian Balthazar, good to see Hi, you, Brian. Brian. Thanks Welcome for having me. Great wow. to be good here. Good to have you. It's going to be a busy month, right? Yeah. Ready to dive into it? Let's do it. Good. You ready for Mean Girls? Okay. Yes. In, in case you haven't had your heart broken yet today, <laughs> it's been 20 years since the original came out. 20 years. Wow. years. And I understand and you have not seen up. the original. Is that well, right? No, I had not, but uh, Tina Fey gave me a DVD. And so <laughs> How many I, people can say uh, that, exactly. right? I mean, exactly. I know that. Okay. Not okay. Okay. Right. There it is. Okay. Well, this is how Hollywood works. You do the movie, then you do the Broadway show based yep. on the movie. Now we have the movie musical based on the Broadway show that's oh based God. on the movie. Oh, it's a musical? But, yeah, yeah, it is. You oh, don't I didn't see, know it was a musical. It is a musical. Okay, so here's some of the stars. We have Andre Rice as Katie Heron, and we have Renee Rapp, who was on Broadway, bringing that role to the screen. She was four when it came out. Oh, uh, Jonathan wow. Hamm joins as uh, Coach Carr. Is he singing? Tina? No, I don't think he does. Oh, okay. I, and, uh, Tina Fey is back and looks the same, right down to the gymnasium seat. She's wearing, like, the same blouse. Uh, Tim Meadows Tim is Meadows. back. Yeah, Tim wow. Meadows is back as the principal. Um, and, you know, the story, it's about the teen cliques and the young woman who brings them down mm -hmm. in one fell swoop. And this was shot at a high school in Middletown, New Jersey. Oh, I love that. Uh, Busy Phillips, also, who's the... Yes. Cool mom. Yes. You know, she's oh. Regina George's mom, which is going to be really fun. And uh, I think this is, it's going to be a fun. fun. This is next week. <laughs> this is fun. next week in theaters. Let's talk about the FX drama series Feud. Okay. This is Ryan Murphy. And if you know anything about Ryan Murphy, he knows drama. And the oh, yeah. cast of this is amazing. Now, this is a the season center. two, but you do not have to have seen season one okay. to watch this. They're independent stories. This is the story Truman versus the Swans. Okay. And the Swans were these friends. He, uh, Truman Capote befriended all these socialite aristocratic women. Some okay. people might compare them to the housewives, but they had a lot more money and a lot less eye scratching. And, <laughs> um, and basically, he befriended them. They confided in him. And then he wrote a book where he aired the dirty laundry. Oh, wow. He changed the names, but they were all like, no, that's me. I know that's me. Wow. And they basically brought him down. Oh, wow. And it's a great true story. This is on that. FX and Hulu, so you can stream it or watch it. Oh, this is anyway, fun. This is going to be a fun one. January 31st. So you're going to have to wait, but it's going to be worth the wait. Okay. It's going to be so, good. So Sophia Vergara's got this new series on Netflix that's got, getting some buzz. She does. And anyone who underestimated Sophia Vergara is going to have their mind changed by this Ooh. because she, she plays Griselda Blanco, a drug queenpin, wow. not kingpin, right? She was actually, this uh, based on true events, uh, Griselda was once the brains behind her husband's international drug ring, cocaine wow. cartel, and then that didn't work out, so she became, she started her own drug empire in Miami, wow. as one does. Right. She was savage, she was ruthless, she was harsh, but she was also a little charming. She had oh. three husbands, right? So she had to be somewhat charming. Although she loved she, love. Right? <laughs> although she did eventually order a hit or try to murder all three of them. So oh, there's well, a marriage is Come hard. on. <laughs> but this is a series. I think it's going to really change the Good way you her. look at Sofia Vakara. Prosthetics, yeah. makeup, and the way she, you know, she is no longer that woman you see on Modern Family. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be a career okay. changer. I'm real excited for this next one on Peacock. Ted with a prequel. Right. So this is the series based on the two movies. You remember Seth MacFarlane played mm -hmm. this very irreverent teddy bear, and Mark Wahlberg was the grown mm -hmm. John Bennett, the friend of Ted. This takes place 12 years before, I'm sorry, years before in mm -hmm. high school. So they, oh. somehow the family decides, and you're going to have the stars of this on the show tomorrow. Coming up. Yep. Max Burke and Seth. And they decide that Ted is going to go to school with John Bennett, which obviously we know is not a good idea, <laughs> yeah. but it's a good show. And they invented some technology here so the crews could see the bear while they were well, shooting. I wonder oh, wow. I so it's going to change how these things are done. And so it's, it's, it's an interesting story. All of the, oh, by the way, it's R-rated. So I was gonna, This is not a kid. This <laughs> right. is not for the Prepare kids. to have that conversation uh -huh. where your kid says they want to watch it. Right? All right. And real quickly, underdogs. Right. Snoop Dogg. It's kind of a version of Bad News Bears where he's uh, his character is an ex-football player who gets sentenced to community service coaching a peewee football team. <laughs> it's got heart, though. 2005, he launched his own Snoop uh, football league for kids that were underprivileged. Oh. So he's, he helped develop the story. Oh, well, that's true. Great he did. Stuff. Yeah. That's true. Okay. Oh, well, I love that. That's good to see you. So you gotta come back. Coming up, we're going to look ahead to a big year ahead in sports.
Welcome back to Popstar Plus. When Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey started dating last year, of course, sports and entertainment came together closer than ever. And millions of fans tuning into those Kansas City Chiefs games to catch a glimpse of Taylor up in the stands with football fanfare hitting new highs and the Paris Olympics quickly approaching. NBC Sports' Mike Tirico teases all we can expect this year. 2024 going to be a big and busy one in the world of sports. A lot of big events to look forward to, including, of course, the Paris Olympics. And here to break it all down, the busiest man in sports, Mike Tirico. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Good to see you, pal. Happy holidays to you. So let's start there. Yeah. I mean, the mm-hmm. first Olympics since the pandemic, yeah. huge for our company, of course, as well. Right. What can folks expect? Wow, Paris. Let's we'll just start there. I mean, we're going to have all the stars of Team USA and the rest of the world. But Paris is going to be one of the stars, Craig for the obvious reasons, including we're going to have a lot of the events happening right at the iconic spots, like the opening ceremony down the River Seine, yes. beach volleyball at the foot of the Eiffel Tower. We can go on and on. Paris is going to be one of the stars, and we need that for the games. In terms of the athletes themselves, it would seem as if the GOAT is going to be back. Right. Simone Biles will I be know. there. Um, and I know at her age she's considered elderly right. in gymnastics, right. Right. but it seems like she's she's probably the best she's ever been. Yeah, young for the rest of us, right? Correct. But, uh, you know, Simone is married to Jonathan Owens, who plays for the Green Bay Packers. So when we saw the Packers earlier this season, we got a chance to visit with Simone, and she's so excited about the comeback in 2023 and the chance after Tokyo, which didn't go the way she had hoped, to maybe go out in the style that the greatest of all time should go out, winning gold medal. She'll have a great chance. She looked good at the Worlds in 2023. Certain gymnastics will have Simone in the pool, it looks like. We'll have Katie Ledecky once again. And Caleb Dressel, it seems as if he's going to be there as well. Yeah, he's dipped his toe literally back in the water. Looks like he'll come back as well. But the Katie Ledecky story is so good. She's been so good for so long, going back to London in 2012. So if she wins the gold in the 800 meter, and she's the favorite, then she'll win that event four times. Gold medal four times in the same event. No woman's ever done that in the history of the Olympics. So there's a lot of history out there for a lot of folks. Katie at the top of the list. Team USA men's basketball. We don't know the team just yet, but it seems as if we are going to have the dreamiest of dream teams in Paris. The re-dream team. Yeah. The guys are talking. LeBron, I think, has just kind of put out word very subtly, let's get the band back together. So we may see LeBron, Kevin Durant, who we've seen before, and Steph Curry, who has never had the chance to play in the Olympics, but desperately wants to, plus the young players like Joel Embiid. So the re-dream team may bring the band together for a little run in Paris, which would be pretty sweet. And before Paris, of course, the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, that thing. This year in <laughs> Vegas, uh, coming up in a few weeks in February. Yeah. At this point in the season, I know it's kind of hard to tell exactly, but who does Mike Tirico like? Look, we've gone through a good part of the season. We've seen the teams that look like they can do it under pressure on the road in the Super Bowl. In the NFC, you're looking at San Francisco and Dallas and Philadelphia. They've had their moments during the year. In the AFC, Baltimore, Lamar Jackson's had a terrific season. The Ravens, Miami, but I know Kansas City is close to your heart. You know how much your son loves Mr. Mahomes? Yes. The Chiefs still have the pieces, no matter if they have to go on the road, yeah. to make another run. Mike Tariq, always good to see you. Happy New Year. It's going to be a going to be a busy year for you. Let's go. As you they too. all are. That's <laughs> true. Thank you, Mike. 2024 gearing up to be quite the busy year in sports. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. If you'd rather pick up a book than catch a movie or watch television, you are in luck. Author Isaac Fitzgerald stopped by Studio 1A to share his list of what to read this year. It's a new year, which means new books. We've gathered some of the best new releases to kick off our 2024 reading resolution. So here to help us out is Isaac Fitzgerald, author of the best-selling memoir, Dirtbag, Massachusetts. Good morning, Isaac. Good morning. Good Happy morning. New Year. Yes. How are we all doing? Oh, all great. my book recommendations come from you. Like, oh. I love your excitement about books. And this first one just received a Best Motion Picture nomination. Okay. Let me tell you this, all right? Oh, this book yes. is fantastic. It's Erasure by Percival Everett. Now, listen, this book came out in 2001. But if you missed it then, now's the time to read it. Because it just got made into a fantastic movie called American Fiction. It's by first-time oh, director, yes. Cord Jefferson. Let me tell you who's in this. Jeffrey Wright yes. is in this. Yeah, this. Yeah, Issa Rae is in Sterling. this. Sterling K. Yep. Brown is in this. Yep. Erica Alexander is in this. It's yeah. a fantastic, fantastic movie. Now, let me tell you what's about. Leslie Uggams is in it. There's so many great, wonderful actors in this. I just saw it. The, the place was packed. Okay. Everyone was laughing. It's about a black college professor. His writing career is not going that well. He writes a kind of tongue-in-cheek joke of a novel under a surname. It's called My Pathology. And then they changed the name to something I cannot say on television. Uh, and it brings him wild success. He meant it as kind of a send up of the publishing industry, brings him wild, wild success. But what I love about this movie and what I love about this book is at its core, it's a family drama. Ooh. It's a beautiful American family tale. Okay, See the movie, one. buy the book. Yeah. All right. Movie, did the movie stay pretty close to the, to the book? It really did. Okay. So the book is fantastic. The whole like joke book yeah. is in this it's book. Oh. So if it's you a book within a book. It's, listen, this is the most meta recommendation I've ever done. Wow. A meta. movie based on a book and there's a book within this book. It's, it's fantastic. Wow. But no, Court Jefferson did a wonderful job okay. and really stuck with it. And Percival Everett was an executive producer on it, so it's right. great. Okay. Well, you know, I love a good romance novel. Yes. Um, you do? Oh, really? No. My man. Okay. I'm ready. I was ready to sell ready. you on this. I'm ready for this uh, one. <laughs> What's the last story here? Let me tell you. Binding 13. It's by Irish writer Chloe Walsh. It's a beautiful tale about basically a very kind of alpha, strong jock. His name is John. And this wonderful, shy character named Shannon. Of course, it's a will they or won't they, right? We all know this mm -hmm. story a little bit. What makes this one so great, of course, is the Irish background, but also it centers on rugby. All right. Oh. All I have to say to sell this book is rugby thighs. That's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, to sell this book. all right. But no, let me tell you this. What makes this book so wonderful is it's so in depth. The relationships, the friendships. It's not just about the romance. Uh -huh. This you don't want this book to end. And I'm lucky to say, one, it's very long, but you don't want it to end. When you come to the end, there are so many more books coming to oh. It's called oh, The Boys of Tomans. Way. There you go. Oh, love that. Is it a picture no, book for those of us who are legs? No, oh, even, right. listen, yeah. listen, you got to use your imagination. <laughs> no, pictures? Wow. You, you really got to get out. I was just talking about the rugby <laughs> thighs. Anyway, uh, as far as a, a thousand words, this is a book for people who want to do more writing themselves. Oh. Absolutely. And I know we've got some writers here among us, but I just want to say, if you are a reader who thinks 2024 is your year to start that project that you want to work on, this is the book for you. It's yeah. a thousand words. It's by this wonderful New York Times bestselling author, Jamie Attenberg. And what she did is she gathered writing advice and tips from over 50 household names. Yeah. Lauren Groff's in this, Roxane Gay's in this, Celeste Ng is in this. Wow. There's so many, I mean, some Emma Straub, Today Show favorite, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jasmine Guillory, Guillory is in Whoa. this. So it's all this wonderful writing tips. But what I love is it makes writing feel Doable, yeah. and that's it's so so encouraging. I'm working on a big project myself right now, and oh. this book is helping me. Oh, when wow. will we hear about this big project? Oh, we'll talk about it. Okay. We'll talk about it. Don't you worry. We'll squeeze in two more. Okay, yes. this one you say the next one is set to become the most talked about thriller of 2024. Let already? me tell you, Anna. Oh, I'm going to keep it quick on this okay. one, but let me tell you, how do you make a thriller about a character that's been asleep for four years? I don't know how Matthew Blake did it, but he did. This book is so intense. 25 year old woman, she murders two people. There's no Rhyme or reason to why she did it, but she's been asleep for four years oh. since. Now there's a forensic psychologist who has to wake her up and really has to figure things out, but he's got secrets of his own. This is told oh. from multiple Ooh. perspectives. It is a page turner. If you are like you, if you are a fan of the sleep patient, yeah. you are going to love this oh book. It is so, so good. I love this yeah, okay, now like if we want to laugh, the best Here we go. book I for that. I love this one. Jesse David Fox, comedy book. Here is a thrilling, thrilling book 
that looks at comedy the way it should be. It is an art form. Yeah. Comedy yeah. is seeping into all of our conversations yeah. right now. Doesn't it seem that way? Yeah. This is a fantastic book that looks at that, but still manages to be funny. It oh. is not dry. He, he ties in his own relationship with comedy. He has written about comedy as a critic for Vulture for over 10 years. Oh, I know. So, okay. Yeah, this yes. is like, this oh, is like wow. talking to your best friend about something that he's obsessed with. He knows with. about. Oh. It's so, so good. so good. But also, it's a great look at the last 25 years of comedy mm -hmm. and, again, how it's become part of the national conversation. It's an art form that, as Dr. Rodney Dangerfield says, gets no respect. That's right. <laughs> but it's changing. Before you go, Al just asked about it. We do have a little time. Tell us. So, uh, you correct me if I'm wrong. You're working on a novel about Johnny Appleseed, and it's got you traveling the country? I love that. Thank you so much. The one thing is it's not a novel. It's oh. a memoir. Okay. Oh. Basically, Ron Chernow, right? We all know him. Sure. Wonderful writer. He can write these big, large biographies. I love them, but I'm not that academic. Okay. But what I can do is go walk around where Johnny Appleseed, known as John Chapman, did walk. So I've spent this whole past year, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Western Pennsylvania, all around Ohio, into Fort Wayne, Indiana. I went to the Johnny Appleseed National Convention. I went to a, wow. see a Tin Caps game, which is a minor wow. league baseball team mm -hmm. in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I Why, have, Johnny Appleseed? What's your why? Let, let me tell you why. Because during the pandemic, I started walking 20,000 steps a day. Wow. And I was going to walk across the country. And my girlfriend said, great idea. You won't have a girlfriend when you come back, <laughs> but good luck. And she said, is there somebody that you love who walked a lot? Oh. And I picked him as an American like figure. walking in he, his shoes? Kind he's of a thing? real man. His Ooh. name was John Chapman, and he's fascinating. Is, I, I can't, can't wait, wait to tell you all about it. I cannot wait to read story. this. I, listen, I need to write it. Wow. <laughs> okay, there's that. But I'm, I'm sure you'll get to the I've done the walking, and this yes. year's about the writing. I'm sure you'll get to his core. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good sorry. one. You're in Latin jokes sorry. every day. No, I'm sorry. sorry. I loved it. I'm sorry. Thank you so much, Isaac. I'm we so always love right now. You are red. <laughs> For Thank more you. on Isaac's January picks, head to today.com slash books. I kind of feel like you should just stay with Al wherever he goes to make him feel good when he makes <laughs> these jokes. Hey, quit. Uh, he makes me feel good. Quit, 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 quit Yeah! yeah. Woo! Love Isaac, man. That guy gets me pumped up for lots of books. Sounds like some great reads uh, can be yours in the new year. When we come back, what astrology is saying about 2024? Stay with us. From Beyonce to Lady Gaga to Selena Gomez, a lot of celebrities cannot get enough of astrology. So we got astrologist Stephanie Campos to stop by the third hour to share a very interesting outlook for 2024. Welcome. Welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, so for the sake of time, because I feel like we always run out of time, you take the 12 signs and you put them into three categories to kind of make it easier for everybody to understand. So the first category, one of the best, Aries, <laughs> uh, which happens to be mine. You have Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. What do they have to look forward to? So Aries and Libra's main focus is going to be on their close relationships, whether okay. it's with a best friend or a romantic partner or a business collaborator. They could have some big 
dramatic changes. And so for better or worse, like I mean, new may... beginnings are ending. All right. Ooh. Yes. All right. Hmm. Cancer and Capricorn are going to focus on their public and private lives. So they could be considering a life altering move. Maybe they're achieving a lifelong milestone or they have some big changes within their family relationships and dynamics. Mm -hmm. Before we get to the next group, the Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, I just want to say for Mr. Skeptical over here, yeah. last time you were here, you said he'd have an addition to the family. Uh huh. That, you know what? You're right. And we got a puppy. Just welcome into the That's Look at true. that. We did get an addition. Congrats. And I was opposed to it for a while. <laughs> Holy smokes. I hadn't even, I hadn't remembered that. Well, as a tourist, that makes sense. You, you know, you take your time to oh my God. change. Oh, my God. Change can be rough. Now, listen. Wow. I don't want you predicting any other <laughs> additions. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Since he's a Taurus. I'm a Leo. Mm -hmm. And then Scorpio and Aquarius. What can we all look forward to? So Taurus and Scorpio may experience some liberating shakeups in their relationships. Oh, hey. This could be a surprise engagement or maybe even leaving a partnership that they have outgrown. Mm -hmm. But they could also land a once in a lifetime opportunity or collaboration. Leo and Aquarius may feel called to change their career trajectory altogether. This is very much going viral energy. So if they've been wanting to build up their TikTok moment, this could be it for them. Going viral energy. Yes. So that is something. You should get on the top. Uh, maybe it's now time to join TikTok. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, last but not least, uh, we got Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Yes, so Gemini and Sagittarius can expect some rapid growth in their personal and professional milestones. They may also receive a promotion, be taking on more responsibility at work, and this could require them to set better work-life balance boundaries. And Virgo and Pisces can expect a career milestone. Ooh. It's also possible they're buying, selling, renovating a home, or maybe even deciding to expand their family. Oh, yeah. so people like to talk about Mercury in retrograde, and I, I've, I've heard that, but I read recently that Mars is in retrograde. You read that? Yes, you I read did? that. Oh in the notes. I mean, I read that in, in the notes. It's in the notes. Yes, so Mars retrograde can be a little bit more obnoxious than Mercury retrograde because oh. Mars is the planet of energy, action, and anger. I must be so, the Mars retrograde. <laughs> we're dealing with what I was thinking. <laughs> so we're dealing with our repressed anger and frustrations. We also lose our motivation and energy, but it's a really great time to set stronger boundaries and reconsider what we pour our effort and energy Except into. Except for everybody? Everyone. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so you, you always have predictions. Dylan writes them down and then texts us when the day comes <laughs> and then sits and sc true. stares at the sky and waits. Um, <laughs> I, I love do. it. I love it. So go ahead. You can start. Okay. <laughs> So in April, you could experience a once in a lifetime opportunity or collaboration. It's also possible your partner experiences an exciting milestone or maybe someone important in your life. Okay, April. Right. Yeah. April. That's special. Right. Um, that means we're going to text every day. Every day in April. <laughs> April. I'm waiting, guys. <laughs> it's today the day. Is and it my turn or no? No, just. Alan and Chanel. Uh, we're after, blue because you're both Virgo rising. All right. So mm -hmm. after May 26, you can expect some personal and professional milestones to manifest. Mm -hmm. And your day to day life could change in a transformative way. Mm -hmm. So Please you can also kick some bad habits that you've been wanting to get rid of. Ooh. Ooh. Time and make big of no, I'm a nighttime snacker. It's got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know this to be my therapy, but last night the Cheez-Its were out of control. <laughs> so after May 26th, you'll stop yes, that. You'll stop. And what about Craig? What about Craig? Uh, in December, this is going to be a great time for you to reconsider what you pour your energy into, Ooh. the way that you prioritize your personal goals, and to reflect on navigating the path forward in new ways. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's but that's at the end of the year, so there you go. <laughs> got some time to Stephanie, right. thank this was great, you so Stephanie. Much. Thank this you was so good. much thank for having you. me. Hoping this year is a great year for all. Thanks so much for hanging with us. Seems like 2024 is going to be a year to remember. We'll see you next week right here on Popstar Plus. Have a great weekend. This morning and today food, we got this pasta dish. It is simple, yet so sophisticated. Your, your 
family is going to be amazed. Alfred Portali is a James Beard award-winning chef, restaurateur, and cookbook author. Also the culinary director of Sartiano's, a modern Italian restaurant right here in New York City, and the executive chef of Portale. Chef, good to see you. Nice to see you. Good morning. Always. Good morning. I love yes. you. This is about as simple as it gets, but I, I've been so looking forward to tasting this. Yeah, it's a very, very simple dish, but very versatile. Okay. Um, uh, but we start with... I'm also finding a little bit of butter. I've got a bit of heavy cream in there. Mm -hmm. okay. Cream and butter so far, okay. check. And we want to wanna whisk, mm -hmm. whisk this in. Is there a temperature that's too high for you know, cream? The, the, it should be medium high heat. Okay. Um, you want to just keep keep it moving. Uh, once you emulsify the butter, mm -hmm. then we add, this is a mixture of lemon juice mm. and lemon zest. That doesn't make it curdle or no, anything? No, 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 no. Mm, lemon juice so and lemon zest. Really quite simple. So okay. okay. Once that's working, mm -hmm. we drop the pasta. I'm using fresh pasta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that cooks faster than the, 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 the dried box? Yeah, about 90 seconds. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have some salted, boiling salted water. Mm -hmm. We cook that. Okay. Um, I have some over here that looks about done. Okay. So this is, it's a very simple dish. I think mm -hmm. a simple but Rather but yummy. Real, yeah. elegant, simple, yeah. and easy and versatile. Yeah. Um, at Sartiano's, we we serve this dish with a cetra caviar. Oh, so, okay. So shake it up so a little bit. So you could do like seafood with that, like shrimp or something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, I like to do it with mm. smoked fish. Is great. Uh -huh. salmon, could you like shrimp, sprinkle bacon lobster, on top? Mm -hmm. or, or even vegetables. Or, or like they'll enjoy some bacon. Some bacon in there. Mm. Bacon. All right. Then we're, <laughs> we're talking. Guanchi, my language, my language. language. So now you're just adding a little uh, parmesan, parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. chives. I'm trying it. And if it gets too thick, do we, would you add a little pasta mm. water to that? Or exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh! Look at that. That's it. Oh. Amazing. And you know that's what? It. That's literally that's a five-minute dinner. You guys have to try table. this. That fresh pasta, first like. of all, priceless. Wait, I missed this. You, what did we put in there? Uh, chives. Oh, chives. Oh my gosh! All right. Are you and kidding there me? we have it. I right, now I have to try. And it's so simple. Wow. Oh, really flavor. bright oh flavors. My gosh. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Oh, yummy. Is there a secret? Why is this so yummy? <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. That is Thank delicious. So delicious. Chef Thank Alfred Portelli. the fastest Thank dinner you. I think Thank we've you. ever I know. Made. I want people to try it so they can see why we're like. Go to today.com oh slash food. Get this oh recipe. Goodness. Oh, my gosh. Make this tonight. Yeah. Third hour of today. We'll be right back. And you're good to go. Yum. People mm. will kiss you full on the lips for this. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Look who's in our kitchen this morning, home chef and cookbook author, Patel Pat Palak. Pala Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Palak Patel. Palak Patel. You got it. Yeah, Palak is whipping Thank up you. a delicious recipe from her debut cookbook, The Chutney Life, 100 Easy-to-Make Indian-Inspired Recipes. Palak, welcome. Thank you. Thank we're you so for having me. We're so happy that you're I'm here. I'm so excited to be we're here. We're very we, excited we to try this We feel like this out. is a great weeknight kiss. Yeah. Such a great weeknight meal, and it's really fall forward. Okay. And spaghetti squash is super great for fall, so I'm excited. Okay. Okay, I'll talk so to tell us. us what we should do. All right, so we've got our spaghetti squash here. I've mm -hmm. already sliced this in half, and we're just going to drizzle this with a little bit of oil okay. and salt and pepper, and then... This gets roasted. So you just scraped it out, no, yeah. no big deal, that was it. Okay. All the seeds and mm -hmm. all the kind okay. of middle flesh, so super quick. And then salt and olive oil. Okay. Salt really well, because mm -hmm. that's gonna add a lot of that flavor in there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our pepper. Mm -hmm. And you can be as generous as you like with this. Cool. And then we're gonna roast this cut side down. That's gonna help ah, the inside of this flesh cut side cook. Down. Okay. Plus you're gonna get these golden caramel edges, and that's okay. where you get a lot of flavor. How, How long do you so work that for? In the oven, 375 for about 45 to 50 minutes okay. until it's really nice and golden. Okay. okay. Now. While that cooks, we're going to make our sauce. So I've got some oil here, and mm -hmm. this is where we add a lot of great flavor. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so we've got cumin seeds. These are going to start to kind of sizzle mm -hmm. and crackle in the hot oil. And then adding your spices to the oil is just a great way to add that what depth and that? flavor. These are mustard seeds. Oh, oh mustard seeds. It's very, seeds. it's just, they're, they're crunchy. They mm -hmm. have this kind of little bit of zing to them. And so we're going to cook these, okay. and they're going to get really nice mm -hmm. and toasty. How long you cook them for about 10 minutes? I'd say about 10 minutes, and you want to kind of hear them crackle and pop, and that's okay. when you know, all right, it's going to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then we've got our aromatics. So we've got mm. garlic, ginger, green chilies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't like spice, you could always leave these out. And we've got some diced red onion. So all of this, okay. we can... Okay. Yeah, you okay. can do that. And um, I'll do these. I will, okay. yeah. So 
if you're enough. making it for kids, you leave out the green chilies. Probably. You can leave out the green chilies, but the garlic and ginger is not going to add kick. It's just no. going to add flavor. Yeah. So I make this for my kids all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll add a little extra butter and cheese for my yeah. children. So, and then you can add whatever veggies you like as well. So this is really versatile. Okay. If you want to add meat, you could add mm, meat. Smell to that, it. We smell add that these already. spices. Yes. Already. And the, so I've got tandoori masala, garam masala, and cumin. So it's just mm -hmm. really warm and mm -hmm. yummy. Mm -hmm. And spices, some tomato paste. Tomato paste. This is going to add a beautiful color along with just like a really great buttery tomato mm -hmm. sauce. We're going to cook this down until it's really nice and so it looks golden. Like what we have. Which yeah. is over here. So then we get here and the flavors are going to develop. Those spices have a mm -hmm. chance to kind of blend together. To this, we're going to add some butter yeah. um, because that's just going to add that richness mm -hmm. and creaminess to the sauce. And then we have a little bit of chicken broth. This is going to help thin the sauce out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then to that, a little bit of good old cream. Cool. Um, and again, cozy, mm -hmm. really great fall meal. This is the fun part right here. So this is your yes. cooked squash. Cooked yes. squash. So and this now is what it looks gonna... like. It's going to be golden. You scoop it out. You've got strands. And this is what you end up with with the sauce. And you don't even need to do anything just Super scoop easy. it out. You, you just scoop it up and it's going to turn into these kind of like spaghetti strands yeah. as you see. Oh, it's They're really um, super easy. It's, you know, nature, Mother Nature's version of And it's kind of a, a way to get <laughs> veggies, but it's like a noodle. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like a noodle and so you don't miss the pasta. Is that so yummy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, it's that a great meal for That is super, fall. super mm -hmm. yummy. Thank you. I'm glad thank you enjoyed you it. Thank you so much, Pollock. Thank that you. That is delicious. All right, thank you. Well, those recipes and more, go to today.com slash food. Thank wow. you. Thank you. Yummy. Make Ahead Monday, and we're always trying to find ways to just switch things up a little bit. So this morning, we have a meatless twist on two classics. Joining us to help our healthy lifestyle influencers and hosts of the Facebook show, Keeping Up with Coco and Lala. And it is Coco and Lala with us this right. morning. Good morning, ladies. Hi. Hey there. <laughs> so before we get started, I just have to ask, how'd you decide to make vegan and vegetarian meals together? Well, I'm vegan. And I'm vegetarian, and so we just came together and created a dynamic duo. Makes well, pro tell me this is good. So we're going to do this. Let's jump in. You're starting with a cauliflower bolognese sauce. Lala, why is cauliflower a good substitute for meat with this? Because it, it honestly, it tastes just like meat when you have it with the, the spaghetti sauce. And or, the taco seasoning. And the taco seasoning, mm. which we thought of this for you guys because we know you guys are busy moms. Al's doing this healthy eating type mm -hmm. thing. So this is a great substitute and the kids love it. Coco has five kids. Her kids love this. Okay. And it's simple. So and let's get cooking. Yeah. Let's get cooking. Let's what do we you start okay. off? And you mentioned taco seasoning, which I'm a big fan of the taco seasoning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. So you want to start by ricing some cauliflower. And you can always buy this pre-riced as well. So once it's riced. All you need to do is get your saucepan, add in some garlic and some fresh onion, and saute this for about uh, five minutes. You add in your cauliflower, and you let that simmer and saute for about 10 minutes, and that's it. Um, once that's done, you add in your taco seasoning. I'm going to try this. 
This is so amazing, you guys. We literally called this uh, best ever because yes. my daughter Malia, who was seven at the time, well, I kind of tested this recipe on my family mm -hmm. without telling them. Mm -hmm. And she tasted it. And she's like, this is the best food ever. <laughs> <laughs> so now we call this best, best ever. ever. So after your taco season is in, then you add in your pasta sauce. Okay. Just your and favorite just pasta like sauce? That, yes, your favorite pasta sauce. How do you not make it just too soggy? Like that, Sometimes gotta... with the cauliflower rice, it gets mushy. Look at you knowing. Well, that because I like cauliflower rice. But it... <laughs> so you want to make sure that your pan is hot and you have a little bit of oil, and you, you definitely want it to okay. so that it's not too mushy. That's yeah. why you only want to leave it on for about 10 minutes, you guys, because, yep. yeah, you're right. You don't want it mushy. Nobody yeah. wants it mushy. Okay. And then and you just put this like over that, it's done. any kind of pasta. Any kind of pasta. Any kind of pasta. And if you really want to help it up, you can use... Um, Zucchini noodles oh, or the oh. noodles. Yep. Okay. And, and then so you would take it out the fridge the next day, you have some extra. Oh. And then what you want to do is add your vegan barbecue sauce to your cauliflower. Already have it pre-seasoned from yesterday. And you want to heat it up. You're going to add it to a a bun. A toasted bun. You can yeah, add a little bun. bit of green peppers if you like. Mm. And on top, we're gonna, now I don't know how to say this right, so I think it's Gardenera, but I say Italian relish. Sure. Ooh, a little bit give of it a little Italian kick. Relish, and yes, a nice give kick. it a little kick. Yeah. And TV magic, it's done. Very <laughs> oh. good. A little vegan cheese. And there's on no there? meat in anything. And you can have vegan cheese too if you want. Yep, absolutely. Wow. That's really No terrific. meat. No oh. meat. It's quick. It's easy. Anybody can do it. Everybody probably has taco seasoning in there. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. ah. You know, there you go. We'll keep you posted. I'm going to gonna try it. All right, we're going to try That's that. Fantastic. Yeah. Coco and Lala, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. If you're looking for a way to get everybody together this weekend for dinner, tell them you're making the ultimate Italian family meal. Of course, we're talking about spaghetti uh. and meatballs. And you can't get any more classic than that. Our friend Scott Conan is going to show us how to fix it ahead so you don't have to spend your Sunday in the kitchen. His recipe is straight out of his new cookbook. We love this title, Peace, Peace Love, and, and Pasta. By the way, brilliant title, Scott. How are you? I'm great. It's nice to see you. Thanks for having me this morning. Well, everybody loves a good old-fashioned plate of spaghetti and meatballs, but I know you have your Scott twist on it. You know, it wouldn't be me if I didn't just do a little something to it. I, uh, I started with this beautiful Neapolitan tomato sauce. So I took, I took a bunch of beef and onions and celery and crushed red pepper and garlic, and I cooked it all up together, got it nice and caramelized and brown. I added a bunch of tomatoes to it, fresh tomatoes, canned tomatoes, about 50-50. And then I just cooked it for a while. Mm. Uh, I made a large batch, so this went for about three and a half hours until this meat, which I later pulled out, was just falling apart and beautiful. Mm. And I love those little flecks of meat every once in a while that you get in the tomato sauce itself. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is take that tomato sauce and make these little polpettine. We call them polpettine because we charge by the vowel in Italian restaurants, <laughs> right? So, you know, it just goes. <laughs> so I have here um, this beautiful, uh, can you see that? So yeah. it's ground beef, ricotta, mm. Parmesan cheese, wow. garlic oregano, just a really simple, straightforward recipe. The, the key to it is this panade. And I just mix it up like that and make these meatballs. Mm -hmm. I like the meatballs really tiny. Oh, so I line them up adorable. like little soldiers. Those, yeah, and I just take them and roll them out really small. It's painstaking, gives you a lot to think about, a lot of time to think. <laughs> and I just line them up on the little tray just like that. And then what I'll do is I'll go to this cast iron pan here and I'll fry them up oh, fry the balls. butter, a little bit of olive oil, and a little bit of, and you see how nice and golden yeah. they get? They're just really beautiful. Ooh, yum. Um, and I toss them in that sauce, just like this. Look at that. I add a little bit, and I'll just let that cook like that together for about five minutes or so, just for a little bit of flavor in part. But there's so much incredible concentrated flavor inside this tomato sauce with those meatballs now. I take this pasta, this macaroni, this is a store-bought one. You could easily do the one that I have in the book as well. It's a beautiful macaroni. And toss it together. And I add a little bit of this pasta cooking liquid as well. 
Did I lose you there? Yes. I, think I lost you. No, oh, no, there no. We go. Right here. We're, just, we're just taking notes. Right there with you. Okay. <laughs> so toss it all together. Add a little bit of butter, a little bit of torn basil inside of it. Mm. And this is special stuff. You know, you could freeze the sauce ahead. You could yes. freeze the meatballs as well. I mean, those are really important things to do. And then it's just really easy assembly for you. I mean, that, by the way, Scott, we want that. It looks so good. You said you you throw some butter cubes in the yes. finished product. So I put a little bit of butter inside there. Ah. It, you know what it does? It rounds out the edges of the acidity of the yeah. tomato sauce. Okay. You know, so I feel like it just kind of softens it on the. Cody and I both like to eat yeah. our our spaghetti with our kids, Lady in the Tramp yeah. style. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. And we're gonna try it with your recipe this weekend. <laughs> thank you, Scott. To get Please thank do. you, Scott, to get this recipe, head to daycom food. And for Scott's mm. cookbook, we love this. It's called Peace, Love, and Pasta. Head to daycom shop. It is 8.49 with Today Food, and this morning, our dear friend Valerie Bertinelli is back. She's with She's us. She's up. By the way, we just lost her shot two seconds ago, and she came back because we just trust and believe. Right. The power anyway, of Valerie. We are so happy that Valerie's here. She's got recipes that are full of light and full of flavor. Hey, Valerie, I know you're just resetting your shot. We're so and, happy uh, that yes, you're I here. Do. I don't know. Oh, I got to fix the, um, That's the all right. sound. Take your oh, time. No, you're good. Take your you're time. Good. You're you got Can time. You hear don't us? worry. It's the perfect. Oh, it's yeah, good. Yeah, we yeah. see your glasses and your ceiling. You look adorable. I don't know if she can <laughs> hear. Like, oh, she can. oh, she can hear us. There you go. The perfect spring dish, Valerie. Why are my earpods not coming on? I don't uh, know. Right. You know what? Um, you're and to you know what? Wolfie's you don't music. have to be a arithmetician to be able to make this. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. Go, Valerie. I love how no, long people are watching the show. Go, Valerie. Yeah. yeah. Valerie, can you hear us? I can hear you now. Oh, can you hear me? All right. Girl, we're yes, so okay. glad we're so glad to see you. Other than your <laughs> shot just going down, how have you been doing? I've been doing very well. How about you guys? Well, I cannot wait to get my butt to New York to see you guys in person. I yeah. right? know. We, we want fine. you to be one of the first chefs who walks through the door. So what are you whipping up for us today? Oh, I am whipping up. Oh, let me get everything on. I'm so worried about actually getting on. Um, so I've got a little bit of olive oil. This is a nice lemony, herby um, with uh, uh, pasta with some nice fresh beans. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a pan going with a couple tablespoons of butter. I'm just, I'm all clamped now. Okay, so let me get the heat up and get this all melted. And then into that, you're going to throw some shallots, one shallot. And that's mm -hmm. all nice and chopped easily. Mm -hmm. Shallots are really easy that way. Get that stirred up. 
while the shallots cook, you're going to slice up some garlic. Now, usually I like to grate garlic into any mm. meal that I'm making, yeah. but I want to see the slices of garlic in here. Mm. And they get really beautiful and soft and creamy, and they just melt right into the pasta. Mm. So I've got the pasta already going, just plain old spaghetti, the good stuff, mm. good old fashioned spaghetti that I grew up on. Yeah. So while this sautés a little bit, plus we're going to get a little bit of chili pepper, red pepper in here. Mm -hmm. And I, this is going to soften up in the butter and the olive oil. So as that softens up, the pasta is really ready to go because I put it in when we first met you guys at the very, very beginning, like 45 minutes ago. Not that long ago. <laughs> anyway, you're that? going to use the nice hot pasta water and throw in your snap peas. And you're going to give them a really quick blanch in there. And so while those guys blanch and this guy fries up, you're gonna throw in a little bit of heavy cream. Oh, and this uh -huh. is gonna give you a really a beautiful, mm. creamy sauce. Mm, it's will. just a couple tablespoons. It's not much. I love that I'm hearing all these mmms and mmm. Mm. Mm. One of these days we're gonna be together and you'll be yes. able to actually taste it. Yes. So while that cooks down, I'm gonna throw this heat down really low because I don't wanna boil off all the cream. Then you're just gonna grab some pasta water out of your pot right here mm -hmm. where your beans is, are blanching. Throw that in there and you're gonna loosen it up. And while you're at it, just grab all of your spaghetti and your beans, snap peas, what am I calling them beans? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're gonna throw them right into right in what you just created, yeah, that beautiful like that sauce. that thing just drains the water right there. Ooh, yeah. I know, isn't that great? Yeah. Then you're gonna throw on some lemon juice and some lemon zest, mm, get a nice lemony flavor because mm. that's the way I roll. Get that all mixed up. And while you're mixing that, throw in some Parmesan. Mm, of course. And then you're gonna throw in some fresh herbs, oh, some parsley. Oh, that's, 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 that's a live shot. That, that is beautiful. Ooh. There you go. Hey Val, now, could you serve that, that cold? You sure. absolutely could. Look, I made some last night. It came right out of the fridge. Mm. And I'm gonna have this for breakfast when I'm done with you guys. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. beautiful. Isn't that pasta beautiful? For breakfast too. Yeah. That's great. Who's Val oh, hell yeah. Down? Hey Valerie, how's Wolfie doing? He's doing great. His album drops on June 11th. I hope he comes back to see you guys. Yeah, that'd be great. I love Lucky that song, that uh, Free. That track, Free, I think just came out recently. So many good songs. Isn't in that, that okay. amazing? Yeah. I mean, it's so hard for me, even though I know him, that he plays every single instrument on that. I uh, it's just crazy. Mm. He's brilliant, but I'm his mom. What do I know? <laughs> and Carson, when his first, when that single came out, what kind of reception Distance. did it get? Yeah. Oh, immediately. I, yeah. you know, as I spoke to Wolfie, he was worried about what you know Van Halen fans would think, but he's he's carved his own way yeah. with this record. And as Val said, it's and I'll say it, I mean, it's ridiculous that he is that talented to do every part on that record, <laughs> and it's so good. I love you, Carson. Yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. Yeah, it's great. You don't have to pay I'm so anybody proud else. Of him. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, yeah. That's right. You'd have to split that yes. check five other ways. <laughs> <laughs> good to see Thanks, you, Val. Val. Wow, we miss good you. We miss so you. Good Mwah. to see you guys. I can't wait to see you. Enjoy that pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to get your hands on Valerie's recipes, you can go to Day Got. It's been a long 24 hours. Today. Today.com <laughs> slash food. <laughs> and don't forget to catch episodes of Valerie's Home Cooking on the Food <laughs> Network. Bye, Val. We love Bye, you. Bye, Val.
This morning's guest is known affectionately around the world as Pepper Thai <laughs> for her fun videos, her love of spicy food, and Chrissy Teigen knows her quite well. She calls her mom. I love it. For years, Pepper has been showing off her culinary skills on YouTube in Pepper's Corner, a series featured on Chrissy's channel. And now you can cook along with her because the Pepper Thai cookbook is out today. That's right. We're so excited that she's here with us to yes. tell us that and so much more to share one of her favorite family recipes. Good morning, Pepper. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> Hi, good morning, New York. I love Thai food. I so. Pepper, I just, before we get to your recipe, I, I guess Pepper is not your given name. You weren't born with that name. How did you get that nickname? Uh, <clears throat> when I first came to America in 1983, uh, her father and I bought a tavern up in Seattle, Washington, and uh, and we run the tavern for a while. And uh, I've been cooking there, and uh, and I always make my own food, and I eat so spicy, mm. so hot. That, uh, <laughs> and and then my name, my Thai name is kind of hard to pronounce, so I... Uh, so they give me the papers. We'll uh, take it. As, uh, we'll take my it. My name sent. Yes. Sounds good. All right, let's talk about what you're cooking here. Stir fried spaghetti. Yes, yeah, spaghetti and like a sweet chili jam mm. um, with uh, sun dried tomatoes. Mm. Uh, the, I think it's a very easy, pretty much kind of like a pad thai, a little bit. It, I think it's a lot easier to do. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Well, every, oh, good morning. Uh, hi, John. Hi, Chris. They are wedding. <laughs> I'm so excited for mom. We can't hear anything. Oh, okay. Well, it's not rehearsal. I'm a person. I just want to say hi to everybody. Hi. 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 John, morning. Yes, Chrissy is not. We miss New York. I know. Oh, so fun to be all fun. together like that. Pepper, mm -hmm. so how do you make this? Give us your, your, your recipe here. So I uh, just fried garlic, uh, chicken. Uh, slide up and then uh, chili jams. I add in a sun dried tomatoes and I will tell the chicken is cooked. Mm -hmm. This is the chili jam. I had it in my book. Uh, you can make your own or you can buy it uh, at the supermarket. And you can make it spicy uh, it, or uh, sweet, right? Or maybe if your kids don't like right. spicy. Yes, right. Yes. I mean, even this uh, chili jam is come with. Uh, no spice, medium and high. And for me, I add more. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Pepper, Pepper, you use a lot of fish <laughs> sauce uh, throughout the yes. cookbook. Uh, what is fish sauce mm -hmm. for folks who aren't familiar with that? Uh, fish sauce is like a fermented fish. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I cannot live without it. Um, I, you know, uh, we just a lot uh, try to get people to learn how to use it. Uh, even a household is like a regular thing at the house. People uh, really uh, tend to uh, using, using it uh, now more than 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, our house is like every day, uh, you know, more than the soy sauce. Right. Oh, wow. So, Pepper, Thai food, I think anybody would say, is one of the most delicious cuisines on earth. Mm -hmm. The flavor is just so yes. elevated, so good, mm -hmm. but people are probably a little intimidated to try and recreate a Thai dish in their own homes. Mm -hmm. Why should they not be nervous to do that? Uh, people always order Thai food, but I know they're intimidated. I mean, even... Chrissy, she have me now. She's rather have me doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> uh, it's so easy. Uh, <laughs> we have to do our own hair today. <laughs> Does she always do that uh, when you're yes. cooking? Come in and do Such your hair? Such a stage mom. You look she beautiful. She, wow. she loves to teasing me and playing around with me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I would cook every and, uh, day if Chrissy Teigen came in and did my hair. And tested yeah, your exactly. hair. Yeah. Yeah. I did that. Yeah, I yes, I did that. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on the cookbook. Thank you so much. Thanks, we miss Pepper. New York. Love your guy. I watch your guy every day. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you so thank much. Thank you. It's called yeah. the Pepper Thai and, uh, Cookbook. You can find it at today.com. Yes. <laughs> Slash mm. food. Love Thai, Thai food, food right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, got it. Got to do it tonight. Thank now you. that's a good Bye, guys. Bye, Bye, Chrissy. Bye, Chrissy. I wish Bye. John was Love in a towel. You guys. Thank you. <laughs> the family affair today. Oh, I that's love awesome. her.
good Friday morning to you. A lot of folks here in the east ready to break out those shovels. Yeah, the first big snow in nearly two years. It is on the way. Good morning. It's January 5th, and this is today. Messy weekend. 33 million people now under winter weather alert. Snow, ice, rain, and wind on top from the south to New England. Al's forecast on the storm's timing and intensity straight ahead. Campus tragedy. New details this morning on the deadly shooting at a school in Iowa. A 17-year-old opening fire, killing a sixth grader, wounding four other students and an administrator. Just ahead, the gunman's chilling post moments before the shooting and the community now trying to cope. The pain in your heart is just overwhelming. An emotional vigil overnight will have the very latest. Breaking 